for to everyone. So right now, uh, let me share. Hindi ko na pindot to record kanina. Anyway, yeah, 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 continue. Okay. Bago pa lang naman so, tayo mag-starting. Sure. So uh, for those uh, uh, attendees, like 143 as of now, um, so we'll be discussing a lot of things today. Uh, let me share my screen, Sir Billy. Yeah, uh, stop ko lang itong... Okay, sure. you go. All right. So let me just share my screen. All right, so our topic. So this is uh, the topic that me and Sir Billy um, uh, had some discussion, I think, two weeks ago. Um, so the blue team side of cybersecurity, tips and tricks to, to become a rock star. So medyo may pagka, um, uh, may pagka uh, click bite, right? But uh, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll try, I'll try to elaborate uh, a lot of things, si mga confusions, si mga myth, and uh, yung mga things na... Um, that needs to be aware of of every IT professionals nowadays. Again, my name is Renson Cruz. Um, these are the topics that we will be going to discuss today. So in cybersecurity, there are a couple of colors. So we have this blue, red, purple. But first, we need to define what is blue team. and being red team. and being blue team. and How can I specialize with this? And then what's the reason why I'm so invested into this? Why blue team? Gaano ka in-demand ng blue team? And what are the different job functions that we can have when we are working as a blue teamer or if we're working on the defensive side of cybersecurity? And what are those jobs? And we mga available jobs out there, not just in the Philippines, but also in abroad. And a couple of questions that I've received from the past was, what's, what's your day in the life of, um, of a consultant life? Or how, what do you do for a living? Or what do you do on a daily basis? So I will try to elaborate uh, my at least my schedule in a daily basis as, as a principal consultant and how to start. I think this is uh, one of the reasons why you guys are here. So I will also try to elaborate maybe your four to five year path on how, how you can achieve this uh, kind of job, I would say, or maybe how can you kickstart your career in cybersecurity as a whole. And then uh, a very controversial topic, which is salary expectation and then do the right thing. So we will talk about these things as well later on. So if you want your certificate to be to be delivered by Sir Sir Billy, so just you know finish the whole webinar and we will have our ask me anything later on with Sir Billy. So we'll be uh, getting a couple of questions live from the audience. So all right. So enough about myself. Uh, but other than those uh, things that have been mentioned by Sir Billy, I'm also part of uh, of Hack Street Boys. If you've heard about Hack Street Boys, so this is the uh, uh, this is a CTF uh, Philippine team that competes in two different uh, competitions, not just locally, but also uh, internationally. I uh, was also part of a national security uh, wherein I, I work as um, a senior security consultant before when I was in Qatar. And also uh, part of Hack the Box, maybe you've heard about Hack the Box. So I'm also uh, part of the content creators of that specifically for Blue Team Boxes. And uh, yeah, some... some some certificates. Um, I've actually attended uh, last last webinar by Sir Billy and uh, uh, the speaker, and he he mentioned a couple of certifications, which I really really agree. Um, but um, yeah, so we'll we'll talk about certifications if you want later on too. So now let's just to try to differentiate what is the red team side and what is the defense side. So the red team side. As you may know, you've heard about ethical hacking, bag bounty. So those are the things that are more into the offensive side of cybersecurity. So if you are the guy who's doing some ethical hacking, penetration testing of the network, of the mobile, of the application, doing some source code review as well, then that could be considered as part of the offensive side. All right? So sila yung mga nagpa-penetrate ng mga systems. They're the one who's looking for existing vulnerabilities or maybe misconfigurations that can be leveraged by the attacker um, to exploit the whole environment or just to get an initial access because sometimes it takes one click to compromise the whole environment so you mga ini ignore natin mga spam mga phishing emails sometimes it contains exploits sometimes it has a payload once you click it that's it they'll get an access to your systems and uh, that's gonna be like a uh, doom part of your enterprise career 
So on the defensive side, which is me, which is I'm trying to advocate right now uh, on this webinar. So the blue team side is the one who monitors, uh, who's acting as the, the first layer of defense when it comes to your company. Um, we are the one who, who find threats into the environment, who finds um, insider threats as well. Um, we are also doing a lot of attribution. Sino ba yung mga attacker within our organizations? Or who are the attackers within the domain of our business? Let's say I'm working in a fin financial tech industry or fintech, then um, part of the blue team side, which is the threat intelligence, is to perform attributions uh, wherein we need to know who are the, pro the threat actor is or sino ba yung mga nang-attack sa atin? Is it from North Korea? Is it from China? Is it from Russia, Ukraine, Israel, or any other hostile environments out there? And it's not just about profiling the threat actor, but we've been doing a lot of crazy stuff uh, within the blue team side, which I will discuss later on. So some of it are, you know, being a stock analyst, um, mostly part of, uh, you know, your career wherein this is going to be your first job. I mean, it's not required, but most of the time, this is where people started uh, being a stock analyst and then being security engineer. Uh, digital forensics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll discuss a, a, a little bit of deep dive into this um, later on. But just so you know that we have a couple of uh, like designation when it comes to cybersecurity because cybersecurity is such a whole thing. Uh, Sir Billy mentioned kanina na yung IT lang is sobrang laki na ng domain life. This is the IT field, and then there's like a different sub branches. And in cybersecurity, think of it as I think cybersecurity, and then it has different branches out also. So you have to specialize, right? So you have to make sure that you really know what you're doing. And these are just some of the latest hacks that we had from March 2022. So can you imagine just March 2022, these big tech companies get hacked. And um, I'm one of the uh, incident responder and forensic examiner who investigated one of one of these um, companies. I I'm not going to mention the name, uh, but yeah, that, that's that's the fun part of, of doing some some consultancy work also is doing an incident response wherein there's again, there's a lot of crazy things happening that you are involved with, but you're going to tell this to your, to your friends. You're going to tell this to your mom. You're going to just tell your mom that, hey, mom, nahak yung BDO. Oh, mom, by the way, nahak yung Ministry of Justice, right? So it's all about NDA, non-disclosure agreement. And again, it's very impactful wherein you're doing something and then later, late, later today, you will see um, the companies that you are investigating like, oh, nasa news na pala tong investigate ko. Or, oh, I, I was part of it, right? I mean, you cannot just... Shout it, shout, shout it out loud, but at least you have some, some accomplishments to yourself like, oh, I was part of that investigations. So again, these are just part of um, the, the hacking scene that happened last month. So even Microsoft, like one of the big tech companies out there, Nvidia, Toyota, Okta, a very famous one. So Okta got hacked by a 16-year-old, 18-year-old guy from, uh, from United Kingdom. And then Samsung, so they've uh, massively uh, breached uh, a lot of documents uh, lately, uh, which, because I, I think a lot of companies are also using Okta as part of their two-factor authentication platform. And then um, some companies got hit by this. So again, just so you know that almost every day, there's a lot of sin, there's a lot of hacking and data breaches that are happening, not just in the Philippines, but all over the world. And part of the Blue Team campaign is to welcome you guys and to recruit people to be part of this domain because there's a lot of skills gap. There's there's a lot of jobs so sobrang in demand almost every day, almost every week. We keep on receiving a couple of emails from HR, which we'll talk about later on. And uh, you may maybe you may be familiar about the Russia and the Ukraine thing that happens. So there's also a couple of malware or what we call the malicious software that is being used against two different countries. So um, the war itself right now, it's not all about physical war wherein there's like a missile, there's a bomb, there's like um, soldiers, but um, there's also a cyber warfare that's lurking around the surface wherein uh, they're trying to um, destroy, they're trying to um, attack a certain country by just using a malware. And then uh, during the Russia and Ukraine thing, there's this uh, famous malware called hermetic malware, wherein this is being categorized as a destructive malware. So destructive malware means that once you run this into your computer, it might take five, 10 seconds, and then 
you cannot access your hard disk or it will delete your MBR or your master boot record. So what if this is a server? What if this is a very critical infrastructure within our environment? And what if we do have this hermetic malware? What's going to happen, right? Especially if we don't have backup or especially if we don't have a snapshot. So talking about malware, it's going to be like a demo time right now. So I'll be performing a very, very quick demo, not too fancy demo, but I just wanted to show you what I'm trying to talk about here. So let me switch some gears here. Uh, let me just stop sharing my screen and then proceed with my virtual machines, right? So first, uh, let me try to start uh, this VM. So remember that we were talking about um, the hermetic malware, which is a very destructive malware. So uh, I was able to get an, exam an example or a sample malware of that. And then this is the malware, if you can see it on my screen. So I just fire up Process Hacker, which is like a task manager, but a better task manager, wherein I can see all those processes that are running. And then when, let's say, there's some malware like this, right? What if we run this? This is the malware that was used against Ukraine by Russian. Um, so when I try to run, you could see that there's a running process called hermetic.exe, all right? So let's just wait for a couple of a couple of bit, uh, let's say another three, four, five seconds. And let's see how it works. So initially we don't see anything. Right? We don't see anything unless we open a task manager or a process hacker. But we know for sure that hermetic.exe or the hermetic malware was running. So what if we try to restart this? Now let's just let's restart our VM. Let's say we're done for today and I, I'm about to restart. Maybe I'm about to apply, apply some patches. So what's going to happen here because we, we've got hit by hermetic malware is that there's like a missing operating system. So in just a snap, this hermetic malware infected our MBR or our master boot record that could eventually give us you know, no access to the computer. So that's how destructive this malware is. So another example here that I have is what we call a ransomware. So for those you, uh, for those people who doesn't know about ransomware, it's it's a it's a national thing now. It's it's being it's considered as a national security threat, wherein uh, it encrypts almost all of your files, especially if you don't have backup, um, and it will demand a ransom. That's why it's being called as ransomware because it's a ransom, and you should. You could pay it via Bitcoin or via cryptocurrency. It could be in Monero or anything. Um, I have here um, another BM that we use in our class. So let's take it for example that, okay, I have my virtual machine. I have my computer, right? So I have a couple of confidential informations that I have on my computer. Let's say confidential report, confidential or financial report Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, final diagram, etc. Right, so these are very sensitive, highly confidential files that we have in our corporate or in our company. And then let's say we got hit by ransomware. So how does it work? So we have here a sample ransomware. So let me just get that one. Um, it's not there. Them. Okay, let me just. Okay, so I have here a ransomware. So. You can see here na meron tayo mga CSV file or yung XLSX file that can be opened through Excel. We also have docs file, you know, that we can be opened via um, Microsoft Word. So let's say we got hit by ransomware. So this is a ransomware binary that we have. So this is what going to happen into your computer if you got hit by ransomware. All right. What happened? In just a snap, our files got encrypted automatically by this ransomware. And we have a notes here. We have like a readme.txt. Kanina wala to, right? So if we open this up, it will tell us what happened. Our files got encrypted and all your private data was downloaded. We will publish it, blah, 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 blah. And then um, for us to pay this, we have to go into this website, which is an Onion website. So an Onion website cannot be accessed via a normal browser. Um, you can access it via Tor, Tor browser that you can use to access dark web and deep web and those things. So um, our background has been changed as well. Uh, kanina guide them wallpaper yan, but right now it says all of your files are encrypted. Find one, three, blah, blah, blah. Read me the text and follow instructions. So again, it's just less than five seconds that our machine got encrypted if we have a ransomware in our machine. 
And this is very, very dangerous and it can be used. And now it's being used massively to attack certain organization, but not just organization, but also uh, as a weapon uh, from the country itself. Um, so yeah, this is the ransomware. The first one was the hermetic malware. And then the, this one is the uh, malware that was used to attack Acer. And then the attacker demanded 50 million US dollars for them to get the private key for them to decrypt all those encrypted files. So again, this is, uh, this is what we call uh, reveal ransomware, which is going to be on my next slide. So I'll stop sharing my screen again here um, and I will fire up my presentation. Um, also, I'm gonna stop here if ever there's like a question, Sir Billy, or you do want to entertain questions later on. Um, well, that's uh, on fire. <laughs> Thank you for those demo, bro. Uh, anyway, if you have some short specific question, lalo na related dun sa demo or anything, probably just, just an icebreaker, put them on the comment para Sir Renson can answer before we proceed. Uh, ito bro, is there any dip, decryptor to every ransomware? Nakikita oh, mo ba yung, yung comment? Yes, yung chat, yes. That's good. Right. Good question. But um, there's, there's, uh, there, there are a couple of free decryptors that are legitimate, but make sure that you're getting this from a trusted sources because sometimes, uh, you know, you, you keep on Googling decryptor, ransomware, decryptor, ra uh, reveal ransomware, Conti ransomware, Maze ransomware, Ryuk ransomware. So those are different variants of ransomware. And then at the end of the day, you found something that is, oh, free decryptor. And then suddenly that's another, that's another ransomware. So now you have two ransomware on your machine. But uh, there's not really, not every ransomware variants have their own decryptor. Um, I think last night, no, not last night. I think two to three days ago, Kaspersky released another free decryptor for I forgot the variant of that ransomware, but just make sure that you are in touch or you know you are subscribing to different newsletter of these security vendors, Kaspersky, um, Microsoft Dart, uh, Cisco Talos Intelligence. Again, Unit 42, we sometimes release uh, free decryptor to, to the users. But again, make sure that um, you are um, not downloading a decryptor coming from untrusted resource. Uh, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, I'm yes, I'm so there was a question. Um, am, I, am I doing it on my virtual desktop? Yes, of course, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> in fact, my host machine, yes, sir, uh, Telly, uh, I'm, I'm doing it using my virtual machine, which I can revert back because I snapshot those virtual machines, so nothing to worry about. Um, is there any, yeah, will they be affected by ransomware? How can we prevent this? So, prevention, so I'll talk about that in a bit, but. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Um, I might answer a couple of questions later on, yeah, uh, yeah. just to, you know, um, just to at least have some running thoughts on, on the discussions, but don't, don't worry. Uh, Sir Billy will, will, uh, mention your questions and then I'll answer that in a bit. So let me just move into my, um, presentation. Yeah, so hold so your questions, with... guys. So, um, dahil baka abutin tayo ng gabi. <laughs> and uh, right. what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna uh, proceed with the presentation first. And then later on, uh, we're gonna cater all the questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Go. Right. So, thank you. So, that's that's the demo. I'm not sure if you're, you're seeing my screen now, sir, sir Billy. All right. So, um, let's proceed with the topic. So, we're done with the demo again, the hermetic malware. And then the second one, that was the reveal ransomware that infects so much uh, companies out there. Um, this is just uh, to give you a very high level overview of, of a ransomware threats that we, are, our team got released, um, I think last month. Um, so we, we've compiled all those resources or all those data sources that we had uh, as because working in a working in a vendor company like Palo Alto, we have like a massive telemetry or data uh, with 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 the with the threats that's going on from the wild, and then me part of the Unit Forty Two, we are we're not also a very tool agnostic team. Uh, I mean, we are tool agnostic. We are not very, really vendor folks. We don't really care if we're a Palo Alto client or not. As long as you got breached, you can call us. Um, and then we've collected this um, uh, massive report. It's actually an annual report from us, a global ransomware threat reports we're in. You could see here the top five ransomware that uh, we've received uh, coming from a 1,000 plus engagement in a year. 
So you could see that there's a Conti ransomware here, reveal, reveal yung kanina nating dinemo. And they uh, normally ask, this is just an average cost of, uh, of a ransomware wherein uh, they, they won't gonna give you the decryptor key or yeah, the key itself if, if you don't pay, right? So uh, just so you know that there are a couple of variants. It's not just one ransomware. I think there's like 50 or hundreds now. So it's really hard to catch up. But And then recently I was dealing with uh, another sort of variant that hit um, an international university. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say the country, but um, yeah, we're dealing with. I, I'm dealing with three ransomware cases uh, in in work right now. So okay, now the question is: now maybe you are being sold. Okay, that's so cool. It's it's really a cool job to be part of Blue Team. So why Blue Team? There are a couple of jobs that you could apply or you could target or you could aim as an individual, especially if you're even if you're like a student right now, even if you're still. Um, studying college and this is what I missed before because before um, uh, during my college days there's only work that uh, my professors are telling me like oh you should be a programmer you should be a software engineer you should be um, you know a, a very good application developer kind of thing so uh, right now um, good thing that Sir Billy and, and the folks are helping the community to be aware that these jobs actually exist so who would who would ha who would have thought that people who's doing um, a defensive side or tracking tracking hackers, investigating hackers, or doing some forensic of what hackers are doing can be a very good job or can be, uh, you know, can be a career itself. So these are a couple of jobs that you may have if you are specialized in blue team. So number one is security analyst. Most people started from this, wherein sila yung mga nagmo-monitor, sila yung gumagamit mga security tools, such as firewall, SIM, um, IPS, IDS, XDR, um, antivirus solutions. So sila yung mga nagmo-monitor uh, ng mga security tools na to, and then they're the one who's creating some use cases. Uh, they're, they're also the one who's performing some triage. Triage means that uh, they're investigating a couple of alerts before it becomes an incident. Um, and a lot of monitoring, a lot of threat detections mechanism. So second thing is threat hunter. So I've met a couple of threat hunters in my life and they're really cool. Uh, threat hunter means that you are not entirely depending on the tools that you have or on the security tools that you have. You are dealing with massive of data and then you're, you're trying to be more proactive on looking for something that is very unusual into your environment. Let's say hindi nag alert yung antivirus ko for the past few months. That's really okay. It means that we're safe, right? But it doesn't really mean that we're 100% safe. Maybe medyo sophisticated yung hacker. Maybe they know how to evade some detections. Maybe they know how to bypass our antivirus or they know how to bypass our firewall or maybe our, uh, our XDR. So Threat Hunter job is to perform a proactive approach wherein um, they, 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 they try to look for threats that are not being alerted by security tools. So malware engineer slash reverse engineer um, if you're a fan of reading codes, if you're a fan of dissecting malware or a malicious software, if you're a fan of um, you know, um, trying to map some behaviors of a malware or a virus or Trojan or worm um, and create a report out of it, then this could be a job for you. So this is a very high, highly uh, in demand and highly paid job wherein every day you'll be dealing with malware, you'll be reversing the code itself. Uh, kapag may mga, um, may mga obfuscations na nagaganap, you have to de-obfuscate it. You have to know what this malware, malware type is. You have to know what's the capability of this malware. So if you're that guy, then you could be part of a malware slash reverse engineering team. So uh, digital forensics and incident response. So this is what I do for a living. Uh, or what we call DFIR. So DFIR, so normally we're the one who's responding to the scene. So uh, I'll discuss later on kung ano yung the day in the life of, uh, of a DFIR guy. Uh, but just to give you a high level overview here, uh, let's say there's uh, a company that gets hacked, then we are the one who's, who's about to perform a scoping call, like what happened here, ano yung mga assets na meron kayo, ano mga data sources na meron kayo, ano ba yung mga uh, tools na meron kayo, and then uh, ano yung mga tinatawag namin indicator of compromise na meron kayo so that we can start somewhere. Ano ba yung mga IP addresses coming from China, from Russia, or from North Korea na nakikita nyo within your environment? So we are the one who's responding to the scene, trying to investigate it, recover some files, a dig dive into the forensic side of, of your file system, into your network, or maybe you into your smartphone. So we also do some smartphone forensics. So that's a DFIR as a whole. Right, so you need to be fast. You need to be like a very rapid response guy. Wherein, 
uh, there's there's a lot of medias covering uh, your investigations. And yeah, there's a lot more. It's a very stressing job, to be honest, but it's very rewarding. Um, threat intelligence, this is what I uh, told you guys about uh, recently, wherein uh, you have to profile, you have to set some standards of what are the behaviors of the attacker that's attacking your organization. Um, sometimes you're, you could be like a threat intelligence, not just within your organization, but also uh, in a nation state level. So you should know sino ba yung mga attack sa organization or sa country namin. Um, sino yung mga APT1, APT2, APT3 na tinatawag? So yung mga threat actor groups kasi may mga code names din sila, right? So threat intelligence um, task is also to perform uh, some negotiations. So we also do some negotiations. So there are a couple of people in our team who does negotiation to the hacker. So what do I mean by that? Why do we need to negotiate? Because of the ransomware approach wherein they ask for a ransom, they ask for a demand. So we have some key guys that can talk to the hackers and then sometimes or most of the time we were able to negotiate 50 out up to 80 percent of of the total price so let, let's say um, a tech academy gets hacked by uh, a ransomware called conti ransomware and then uh, they hire us and then part of our job is to negotiate let's say oh hacker we don't have 10 million us dollars we only have 2 million us dollars can we just pay uh by by having 2 million um, that also comes with the debate of do you pay or you shouldn't pay, right? So there's there's a lot of debates going on. If there's a ransomware, are you going to pay or not, right? Of course, you don't have to pay, if there's especially if there's like a free decryptor, legitimate decryptor in the wild. Um, you don't pay because you are also um, putting some, some funding into the hackers to do it again into another companies, right? But at the end of the day, sometimes if you build your company for, for the past 30 years and then suddenly you don't want this to be disrupted by a single ransomware, sometimes you don't have a choice but to pay, right? So that's the reality. If, if you could ask your CISO right now, this is like a trick question to them. Sometimes they're kind of, you know, hang a bit. Uh, let's say you ask your CISO, you ask your VP, sir, if we got ransomware, are we going to pay or not? Do we have budget for that? So again, it's, it's really an ongoing debate out of uh, InfoSec community, but it's fun. It's, it's fun, not to the fun of people is suffering into this kind of thing, but it's fun as a security guy investigating this stuff because we can only, we can only see this in the movies, right? We can only see this into, your, you know, these um, Hollywood hackers doing their thing, uh, but it's, it's reality. So security researcher, that's kind of like a segue of threat intelligence wherein security researcher does a lot of research uh, when it comes to vulnerabilities. If you know the project uh, uh, Google Zero, uh, that's uh, also an elite security researcher that does a lot of things. Um, and yeah, CrowdStrike, Mandiant, uh, Cisco Talos Intelligence, they do a lot of security research as well. Um, so these are some of the jobs that you can have when it comes to blue team or on the defensive side of cybersecurity because I think uh, for the most part, uh, we are aware of ethical hacking because hacking is so cool, right? Like if someone asks you, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an ethical hacker, right? So it's really cool that there's a times that uh, the blue team side are getting ignored, but it's really, really fun to be part uh, of the blue team. It's really, it's really fun to be part of the defensive side of security. And just talking about cybersecurity as a whole, there's a couple of jobs. So here's, I, I'm a fan of LinkedIn. Um, you may see it on my post on LinkedIn or on my activities. So seven out of my eight jobs into in my whole entire career in, in cyber, I got those seven jobs through LinkedIn. I got those jobs through Headhunter, someone message or um, yeah, someone approached me or someone referred me. But um, the thought is, if you don't have LinkedIn right now, just create one. It's very, it's very, very useful and very beneficial when it comes to us as a professional. And here I've, I just filtered a job of a cybersecurity as a string, a keyword, and then filter ko rin yung location as a national capital region or NCR. And you would see that there is like 686 jobs with cybersecurity as a keyword within just an NCR. So there's a lot of jobs that are waiting for you, especially if you're a skilled one, if you're a passionate one, uh, that's you know waiting for you to be just part on. 
A uh, couple of here are, you could see here, Trustwave. So they're very famous when it comes to, uh, we actually have partnerships with them. Uh, Trustwave, they also have a team called Spider Labs. Spider Labs is the one who's doing a couple of, you know, R&D, research and development thing. Um, Trustwave is also offering different services when it comes to the cybersecurity space. Um, Cisco is hiring, PDAX, um, Amazon. On the right part, Microfocus, they're still hiring for Threat Hunter. So remember, Kanina nag mentioned tayo ng Threat Hunter is a job. So as you can see, it's a, it's a job that is being, hi, uh, being hiring right now. Um, incident response, Kanina, as part of the DFIR role, uh, we discuss also kung ano ba yung incident response, right? Uh, security consultant, even McDonald Philippines is hiring for a security consultant because again, um, it's really an intimate job. Uh, PwC, so the big four firm, the Ernst & Young, PwC, Deloitte, and KPMG, they're always looking for brilliant people to be, you know, to be part of their team because they, they, they're not just an accounting firm. They, they also um, offer cybersecurity as a service, a different services within cybersecurity. Okay, so the day in the life. Um, so this is a typical day in the life of my of my of of my life as a principal consultant. So uh, most of the time, fifty percent of my time is all about investigative work. So I do a lot of technical work. I try to read the file. I try to investigate. I do forensics on hard disk, uh, uh, on a memory dump, on a network file. So like there's tons of gig of files of a network. So I need to know what what makes sense out of it. So ano ba yung mga IP address na may be connected sa um, command and control channel ng hacker? O ano ba yung pinaka IP ng, ng, ng hacker? O ano ba yung mga uh, ginawa niya when it comes to network traffic as a whole? So that's 50% of my job. 15% is allocated with research and development. So as part of my team in, in Unit 42, uh, we, we are being encouraged to perform our own R&D on a daily basis. So uh, we've dedicated almost uh, one and a half hours every day just to perform R&D on our own. So whatever topics we know or what, whatever topics we want, we are doing some sort of R&D there. Things like, ano ba yung latest threats? Ano ba yung mga, uh, mga bagong artifacts na pwedeng natin makita in, let's say, there's a Windows 11 coming in. Ano ba yung mga latest na innovations ng Windows 11? Or ano ba yung mga artifacts na pwedeng natin makita from the forensic mindset? Or ano ba yung mga latest exploits na meron and are we being infected by those exploits or our clients are being infected by these exploits? Or ano ba yung mga detections na pwede kong i-implement dun sa mga client ko when there's like new exploits coming in? 20% um, of my time is all about meeting and client calls because let's say my... So I'm part of the EMEA team. EMEA means the Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So whenever there's like a company that gets half within my my region, then I'll be part of the I'll be part of the call. So the first call is what they call the scoping call. Scoping call is this is when you are trying to know what happened to the client. Ano ba nangyari? Ano ba nangyari sa Tech Academy? Nahak ba yung Tech Academy? Um, ano yung mga IP na nakita nyo? Ano yung mga devices na meron kayo? What are the lags that I can get for me to start the investigation? So that is what we call you know, the scoping call. Or again, 20% of my time are doing that. And sometimes I present. I do present some updates. Let's say I'm, I'm almost half of my way of completing one of my engagement. So I will ask for a, a meeting update. Like, guys, meeting tayo. This is uh, the updates that I have. Nakita ko na yung patient zero. Patient zero means ito yung pinaka first computer na na-infect ng malware na yun. That triggers the whole thing. Okay, so uh, sometimes that's also one of our goal is to find the patient zero. Paano, ano ba yung root cause? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung nangyari within your organization? And paano ba nangyari yung attack vector na yun? So sometimes I present that, oh, this is what we found. This is, these are the users that are being compromised. These are the systems that we have investigated and we've, we've found a lot of uh, mimicats or any sort of hacking tools. So that's my 20% of my job. And 15% is continuous learning. So we have allocated a couple of thousands of dollars just to you know uh, take some certs for free without band, um, attend to conferences locally or internationally, again, without band. So um, yeah, that's, that's the life of uh, a, a security consultant uh, in, in our team. And now this is the career plan. So let's say, okay, so Renzen, I'm a first year college uh, guy, how, and let's say after I graduated, I wanted to be part of cybersecurity community. So how can I stretch out my first year or up to fourth year of my life if this is my goal or if this is what I wanted to be? And this is not just entirely for the student. Let's say you are doing another job, let's say outside tech 
it's also impact it's also possible to be part of this i i, I know a couple of people uh, on my circle na hindi naman sila computer science graduate hindi naman sila it graduate some of them are actually physical therapists some of them are nutri- nut- nutritionist some of them are uh, also sociology part of a uh, social culture life but they're doing a massive things in cybersecurity so you know don't don't be bothered of what 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 the community is telling you about ah oh, hindi ka naman tech background you, you cannot be us right so um you can be and it's really really possible and then and daming uh, living legend out there na hindi naman tech background but they're really uh, a very good cybersecurity professional so now let's stick with step one. let's say this is going to be your first year or you are in a first year college so learning the basic is very very important learning networking learning with sir billy learning ccna learning the fundamentals of networking because at the end of the day as a cyber security you are defending the network as a blue teamer blue teamer so if you don't know how networking works then it's going to be hard for you if you don't know what how tcp ip dns common ports port 22 port 3389 or or how 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 routing works then it's it's really hard right so just spend more time learning the basic i took a lot of years for me not i'm not even an expert right now but i'm just telling you that it took me years for me to grasp the idea of the basic the fundamentals so don't skip this part because this is very very important if you skip this part and then you you know oh this is boring i want to do hacking i don't i want to do terminal and you know green screen and it's like a hollywood hacking right so it's it's re- going to be hard for you if you are here just to show off to your friends or just to show off that you're doing a, a cool career then i don't think that it's going to be for you so just you know try to try to focus first on the basic your a lot your maybe your first year to learn how networking works what's the basic of operating systems what are the different core processes within windows within linux within mac um also some sort of web web, web thing like html javascript css that really helps and some sort of scripting if you can uh like python or powershell you don't have to be like an, a legit software engineer or you know an application developer to be part of cybersecurity it's not even required but it's an essential skill for you to you know to to soar or just to uh be 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 a rock star i would say uh, if you know how to script if you know how to automate things plus your knowledge in cybersecurity then um you'll be everywhere you'll be you you'll be you'll be you know you'll be flying anywhere because again that's a uh, very good skills of yours um step two, let's say you grasp the idea of having the basic um then try to learn some basic cybersecurity terminology like what is malware and yung mga network intrusion because you know now you know now how network network networking works now let's shift some gears and then try to allocate your time on how this is being abused by the attacker how tcp ip is getting abused or how how if the attacker is getting you know or attacking some email components and what are those slugs behind this like what are ms smtp or what is dns ano yung mga fields within the dns logs diba so we should be more familiar of that on the second year um basic pen testing again i'm also advocating this because um as a blue teamer it's it's really good to know how attacker works as well uh for you to know what to do next kasi kapag medyo blind tayo sa kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga ng mga offensive guys or ng mga hackers or adversary out there uh medyo mahirap sa atin malaman kung ano ba tong command line na to ano ba yung techniques na ginawa niya right so so make sure that you have also uh, at least basic fundament or fundamental knowledge of how attacker works uh some risk management and tools and techniques okay so that's like your second year goal now for the third year part So we could do a lot of hands on exercises. So if you don't have VMware, if you don't have virtual box, make sure that you have one. Um there's a couple of questions. Oh sir, uh I have like a dual boot OS or maybe sometimes triple boot OS. Is it necessary? Is it standard? Um I- I'm using Mac right now. I'm also a fan of Windows just so you know that virtualizations is a thing now. So you you don't need to, you know, if I'm going to switch my OS into a Linux box, I don't need to restart anymore. You just have to open up your VMware or your virtual box just to open up an instance into your machine. So I can open up like five, six, seven operate different operating systems without me rebooting my 
my local host or my local system. So that's the beauty of virtualization. So make sure that you play around with VMware with VirtualBox and what should I do with this? Then try to install things like Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Kali Linux, or try to install a couple of Windows server as well, a misconfigured Windows server or a Windows XP, a Windows 7, and try to exploit this, try to look for the logs. Kung, let's say, in-exploit ng attacker to, ano yung mga artifacts na, mag, na, na meron, ano yung mga logs na uh, pwedeng um, uh, mag-appear if I'm the one who's investigating it. So this is the year where in you're dealing with, with a lot of hands-on exercises analyzing your own logs, building your own home lab, um, and also trying to uh, do some sort of web app attacks because again, that's very useful. Um, so that's the step three. Okay, so enough of like, it's, it's gonna be hard for you if you're just listening to the video, if you're just listening to this webinar and you're not acting up on it. So make sure that you also try try to try to to, to do some hands on dirty work uh, for you to become more comfortable of it. And then step four or the fourth year, then this is the the time we're in. You have to socialize. You have to network with people. It's not bad at all if to network with people, especially like this. Let's say uh, you know there's like a tech academy community. Uh, we also have guidance community. Uh, you know, talk to people. We are we're very approachable. Uh, some some professionals sometimes they're kind of intimidating, but in reality, they would reply to you even just in just 10 seconds, 15 seconds, once they saw your email or once they see your um, messages on LinkedIn or maybe in Messenger. So try to network, try to attend a couple of conferences, webinar talks, um, university career roadshow. Um, that, that would really gauge you to ask them uh, ano ba yung ginagawa nila or ano ba yung advice nila uh, for you to become one of them, right? So uh, I remember I was actually the guy, I was the one of the annoying guys who's messaging people on LinkedIn before, way back 2012 or 2014, wherein how to be part of your team or how to be successful. And then, you know what? Some when I when I when I message someone from Google, he actually responded within five minutes of uh, after I messaged him. So I mean, I was shocked because again, oh, they're Google, you know, hands down, untouchables, but um, they are very approachable. So don't don't be afraid of approaching people in a sense of asking for our career advice because that can really leads you into a good path. So sometimes we have all these resources, you know, Google is everything. We have all these resources, we have all of these free talks, but sometimes we are kind of overwhelmed with those resources and we don't know what's the right path. So those are the things that we can ask them. So these are some of the you know, advices that I have from step one up to step four or the first year up to fourth year of your career, especially if you're in a college or if you wanna be part of cybersecurity uh, in the future. And of course, training resources. So as part of Guide Them, we are not just tying up like, no, just don't apply to everyone else. Just apply for us. No, we, we are not that kind of uh, people. Uh, from Guide Them, of course, we offer live uh, bootcamp style, which I will discuss in a bit. But we also advocate uh, and also um, uh, try to, to understand and also to, to put this mindset to our people that don't be don't settle for less don't settle for just one training center don't just settle for one course you know expand your horizon try to leverage those resources online resources that we have right now um maybe you guys are familiar with hack the box so those are mostly red team offensive stuff aside from hack the box academy because we are starting to gauge into the blue team side but these are some of the resources that i've been using that i've used from the past and i'm still using right now um try hack me it's just 10 bucks per month and you don't need to set up your own lab i mean there's like a pros and cons on that but uh, it saves you so much of your time and then you would learn a lot of things when it comes to cybersecurity. So try hackme.com. You can visit that website, you know, try some free machines there or try to try to gauge muna kung ano ba yung mga offerings nila na free. And then kapag comfortable ka na, let's say, oh, this is fun. I wanted to unlock some machines. Then you, you can register. And again, it's just um, 10 bucks per month. Uh, Blue Team Labs Online or BTLO. So this is also a website that's dedicated for hands-on lab uh, exercises, challenges dedicated for Blue Team. So from the world itself, Blue Team Labs Online or BTLO, uh, they are offering major pricey compared to Try Hack Me, but again, it's really, really fun to do these boxes. So it's like 20 bucks per month. Uh, I mean, I'm not affiliated with, with them, but we do have some sort of partnerships. I think last year uh, we, we did have this uh, 
uh, free vouchers. Uh, we have this contest on social media wherein you just have to share our content and then you'll be part of the raffle of, of gaining five VIP vouchers from them. So uh, we're very friends with them. And um, yeah, sometimes they give us voucher and then we don't use it uh, in ourselves. We actually just distribute it um, into the community. Um, cyber defenders, the good thing about cyber defenders, this is free. So you could do a lot of challenges, you know, if you're a fan of CTF or capture the flag. And if you want to have like a free hands-on exercises that you don't need to pay for anything, you just have to um, create your account and then you could do a massive training, then that's cyberdefenders.org. So we are kind of affiliated with them because our courses are actually uh, being part of the website. So they have this website called Blue Demi. So maybe you are familiar with Udemy, right? So these people that we are friends of, they've created a website called Blue Demi that is really focused on Blue Team training courses. Okay, so um, yeah, the, your, our, our course, which is cyber defense uh, and threat hunting will uh, has been part of that uh, for a while now. And then there's also these two websites, Let's Defend.io, which has also contained uh, free resources for blue teaming, and Range Force, which is kind of, uh, there's also community edition of this. So sometimes there's a dilemma we're in, oh, how to use, how to navigate firewall, how to use SIM solution, um, how to be part of SOC, but you are just a fresh graduate. You don't have access to these enterprise tools. And then the HR was asking an experience for these tools, right? So how can you gain this experience? So you could... Um, enroll, you could subscribe to these websites and then you could have fun playing with it. So these are additional blue team training resources that we normally advise uh, to our students and also to the people who wanted to uh, get part of, of the community. And of course, uh, we're talking about certifications. This is also uh, a, a good paid uh, certifications. It's not entirely cheap. This is really, really expensive. Uh, a science or GX certs cost around seven to 8,000 US dollars per year, uh, not per year, but per course. So just a correction, uh, because I've heard some, some sort of rumors last time. So again, 7,000 to 8,000 US dollars, that's like 300 to 350,000 pesos in just one course in just five days of live bootcamp and you'll get everything lab files and course and also the, the exam. So again, I highly, I highly, um, you know, agree to you guys, this is really expensive. This, and this is not really um, achievable for most of us. Even me, I'm, I can't afford it, right? But um, the, the reason why we're taking some search is not to just have those lines after our names or those uh, keywords after our name, but our goal is to learn from the experts or to learn, uh, you know, new skills and new knowledge. So if your company can pay for it, why not? If your company asks, what course do you want? Like, let's say you're in a cybersecurity already, uh, you're a professional already, and I uh, no doubt that GIAC or SAN certs are highly recognized and also, you know, the experience of being part of, uh, you know, a class from SANS and from GIAC and instructors are very enormous and it's very rewarding. I've been into these courses for like six times already, uh, two live courses and then four um, uh, for on-demand or for live online courses. Uh, but again, it's really top-notch. The, 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 the instructors that are uh, talking or you they're really top-notch. They have their own company and they're just doing it on a side. So they are really practitioners. They are not like the typical professor. Um, you know, after college, they did their uh, master and then they did their doctorate and there's no real world experience. There's no uh, company or, you know, practitioner experience all about the books, all from the books. So they're different. So they're not that like that. Uh, and again, this is a vendor neutral, which I really, really recommend. So if taking vendor focus uh, search are also good, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, sometimes let's say, oh, company, they're actually using Cisco. So maybe my knowledge in Palo Alto won't be relevant because they're using Cisco. So I think you, you get my point there. But Science and GIAC is also uh, a vendor neutral uh, vendor. Again, it's very expensive, but there's a way for you to reduce the price up to 70 to 60%, 60 to 70%, which is through the work study path. Okay, so not everyone knows about this, but let's say you're dreaming of taking sensors and you don't have 7,000 to 8,000, but maybe 2,000 is kind of, you know, maybe manageable in, uh, on my budget or 2,500 US dollars kind of manageable. Uh, again, it's still expensive uh, from our Philippine peso currency and you know, the way of how we live, uh, but you, know, you can reduce that price through work study. Work study is like 
you are assisting the instructor as a facilitator. That's it. You're just you know sending some, um, or what do you call that? Um, like uh, uh, an evaluation form every day para malaman ng instructor ko ano feedback on each classes or on each sessions. So you could do it live. You could do it like a, a, per, a live to a face to face course. So that's what we call the work study. And me and most of our guiding folks are dealing with this. Uh, from the past now. So we're not paying 7,000 to 8,000, but we're paying just 2,000. And then we can take some some GX and Sun, Sun course. So uh, these are some paths. So you could see here, if you are the guy who's like on a blue team, um, specializing on intrusion detection um, and also prevent, uh, prevention and def defense side of security, then these are the courses for you. So they, they have like 50 courses now. Uh, so it's very massive. And let's say if you are into incident response, threat hunting, digital forensics, so these are the course codes for you. So there's like different paths uh, depend on your specializations. So that is the science and GF search. Um, okay, so this is a very controversial topic, I know for sure. Uh, salary, I remember uh, when I was in college, uh, I used to ask people, oh, how much do you earn? Without knowing that this is a confidential um, 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 topic. But yeah, hey, but it, it, it's it's, it's about time to discuss this, right? So um, I'm not going to mention names. Uh, these are actually part of, or this, these data are part of, you know, based from my circle, based from my friends, based uh, from, from what I've experienced uh, personally. And these are some of the salary bracket that I can see from the market because also in our team and also me, uh, people keeps reaching out. Hey, Renzo, do you have people who knows these things, stuff? And then this is our budget. Or ito yung budget namin dito, may kailala ka ba? Uh, or sometimes uh, our guide them inbox message, uh, having a message from different recruiters. Uh, these are the list of jobs and these are the um, the salary bracket that they may ask for or maybe this is the minimum budget and this is the maximum budget so i've just collect those things and then put it into graph without mentioning you know the company itself and the individuals who shared some thoughts on this slide so the salary bracket as a cyber security guy within the philippines or this so you could see that there's like a tremendous gap here if you're like a junior having like a one year one to three years uh, experience then you can have at least 50 to 80, I would say, or 50 to 60 range. Um, it depends on your skills, okay? Don't get me wrong here. It still depends on your skills. It depends on your, uh, you know, market value and also how rare you are or how, how good you are in terms of your capabilities. Uh, from the mid or mid level uh, in Philippines, you might get maybe 90, 90K. Uh, if you're like a senior guy doing a senior senior stuff, then you might be earning around one to one fifty or one sixty. If you're like a principal, principal is considered as a senior manager um, from the consulting world. Uh, you might be earning around two to two fifty without you know having without managing people. You're like an individual contributor, and then if you're like a director, you can you could earn. And I know people who's earning around three to three hundred fifty. Uh, director in terms of cybersecurity, but not you know not IT director as a whole. So directory, director is specifically for cybersecurity. And then uh, also I know a couple of VP and they shared some thoughts about this and they're, they were earning around 400 to, to 450 or 500,000 pesos. So that's just the range that, you know, based from a circle. Um, in abroad, uh, we have this, uh, you know, collected also Intel, I would say, uh, that if you're a junior guy, you could be, you could be earning around two to, two, 250,000, mid-level around 300, 350, senior around four to 500. This is per month, right? So this is per month. This is not on a yearly basis. This is a monthly basis. Um, principal could earn millions every month. Uh, depending on your company, um, especially if it's like a cybersecurity vendor, they can pay a lot, I would say. Uh, if you're like a consulting director or director level, they can pay a million, um, I know, a million uh, or plus million or million plus uh, on a month, uh, monthly basis. And then VP, you know, it could high, it could get more, it could be better uh, aside from having a 1.5 million. So this is, um, again, uh, a very approximate um, ratio of, of the salary that people wanted to know and people keep on saying this is very confidential, but again, this uh, it's about time to, to talk about this. And some of you know the some of the messages that I've received, and this is you know some proof uh, that I may have just to back my data, is this. 
So on the left side, um, so there's like a director doing some VAPT who could earn like 250,000 a month. So these are mostly HR and some couple of friends that keeps on messaging. Um, on, the, on the lower part, you could see here, hey, Renzen, would you be open to a company? get you 45k 45k is in dirhams so it's not in pesos so if you convert 45,000 pesos or 45,000 dirhams in middle east that's around 616,000 per month and it's tax free and this is also one that i've received recently um and this one like he's looking for um lead cti cti I means cyber threat intelligence so cti with um an, a net worth per month uh 48,000. So that's around 600,000 per month. So yeah, just to give you some, some highlights there. And one of the perks of being in cybersecurity is you get to share your knowledge and you get to get some invites from, from different uh, you know, media platforms. Could be TV, could be radio, could be magazine, could be being featured and you know, some, some conferences. But you know, the thoughts about here is that you're making an impactful way of, of a career that, you know, that could be impacting di different lives. So sometimes I receive a couple of messages um, because I, I'm teaching every weekend, right? So uh, let's say, oh, hey, Sorenzo, and I got a job, I got promoted, or um, I was able to answer a couple of the interview questions because of the things that we have done during the bootcamp. So again, for me, it's a very humiliating. I mean, it's not humiliating, but uh, it makes me more, you know, humble and also um, makes me more, um, I would say uh, uh, inspired of continuing what we are doing in the, in the community because it's it's really uh, affecting their life. So uh, that's why being in cybersecurity. If if you know something, just share it. If if you know if you want to share something, then just reach out to the people who who owns this kind of uh, platforms like Sir Bailey, and it could be fun collaborating with you. So some tips or last tips that I may have here before I showcase some of the courses that we are offering. Uh, tips to be successful uh, in uh, cybersecurity. Always seek for new learning. I've been in the industry for like nine to 10 years already, but up until now, I still have my pending exam that will expire next month. Uh, I'm also attending a live course uh, uh, next month. I think that's around second week of, of May. Um, so yeah, always seek for learning. Don't settle for, you know, I know this, I know this already, I'll stop. So settle for new learnings because there's always a new things that happens in a technology. Uh, learn to be humble. I've been into a couple of conferences wherein people keep on showing it off. Like, oh, I know this tool. I know how it works. I know how to exploit it. But without knowing that they're talking to the guy who actually created the tool or who actually owned the company itself. So sometimes it's, it's very difficult to, you know, very noise, uh, to, to, to create some noise within the industry because I'm People know people uh, within within the infosec community. So if you do something bad, then it might reach out into other people as well. So uh, learn to be humble all the time. Um, try to don't be arrogant. Don't be 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 be. I uh, would say, uh, what's the term? Um, be approachable into the people because we all started from from nothing. Right, so we know the feeling of having nothing or of, of being like a newbie in the industry. So you know, try to guide them and try to um, at least give some real advice to them. Again, network with people that's really relevant to to the talk today. Uh, thanks for those people who's attending. So you might receive or you might have a new network connections by just attending this kind of webinars. So that's gonna be very very helpful for us and uh, attend conferences. So that's um, also an advice for me. Uh, me, some of my teams, uh, we normally attend a DevCon. And not really because of pandemic but we attended DEFCON last 2019 which is in las vegas uh, right now it's more of like an online um conf conferences so we also keep on engaging with, with the community through those conferences and if you fail that's okay uh, i've been failing almost every day in my life even up until now on my career like after being in a 10 years worth of uh career experience i'm still failing and don't 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 be afraid of, of committing some failures. Make sure that you learn on those failures and don't give up with your dreams as well. That's so cliche, to be honest, but uh, that's, that's the reality and uh, that's you know, what we wanted to achieve, right? So that's some of the tips that I may give to you. And these are some of the courses that we try to offer and we are offering. There's like a new course uh, that's happening right now, which is the Digital Forensics and Memory Analysis. Uh, we have this Cyber Defense and Threat Hunting um, which is uh, been in been been in our 
uh, in our offerings for about almost a year and a half now. And then also new cars, which is a cybersecurity operations. And we are the, you know, we are the authors of this team or I mean of this course. So it's a collective approach of a blue team plus a red team. So Ian is really our offensive guy and me and Shaki, we are the blue team guys. So we've collected our thoughts of, of how attacker evades uh, our defenses or how attacker performs their attack. And we perform forensics out of this scenario. So that's how we created um, this course. And again, it's really hands-on. Um, it's really on top of, you know, on top of the real world experiences that we had and the topics that we have covered here are also tremendous when it comes to the, uh, to the industry wild. So yeah, hopefully we could help you uh, on dealing with, with this um, skills. And that's all. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be answering a couple of questions now if we do have. So back to you, sir, Billy. All right. Woohoo. Um, super value and um jump up no mga sinner ni Sir Renson. So um even uh I, I know most of you are overwhelmed probably, but don't worry, we have the recording and um uh, as far as I can see, Sir Renson just laid out the, the very fundamentals na kailangan nating umpi I mean um kailangan yung maumpisahan para you can get started your career with cybersecurity and yun nga yung potential uh, reward na pwede yung makuha if you work towards it so right now um we're gonna entertain your question para masagot natin isa isa and hopefully masagot natin lahat dahil uh Sir Renson is so so busy as you can see in what he shared so kung hindi naman natin masasagot lahat um we're going to take all of them and then probably we can email uh, yung mga question uh, na hindi natin nasagot sa kanya para masagot niya offline naman sa free time niya. So ayun, kung may question kayo like um, about cybersecurity, about the, the yung siguro probably yung questions uh, na related na lang sa, sa blue team in general para talagang makafocus tayo. Kasi sabi nga ni Sir Renson, cybersec is huge so um as much as possible be specific to the question para you can get specific answer go and by the way before we we entertain the question pala um kindly wait na lang do sa link uh -huh. so probably we can do attendance right now let me um uh, share my screen before we answer the question sir renzon uh sure, sir there you go. So, um, you can go ahead and uh, go to techacademy.ph forward slash Renzon and uh, a malware will be downloaded to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> joke lang, joke lang. Um, you will be redirected to a uh, Google form to fill up your complete name and your email. And then sabi ko nga kanina, yung mga nag-register lang, so that's why we're, we're showing it to your screen, yung mga nag-register lang ang bibigyan natin ng certificate of uh, participation. So again, techacademy.ph forward slash Renzon. Uh, and then complete the form. That's it. After that, uh, you'll receive an email from me or from Tech Academy in the uh, next couple of days on how you can download your cert certificate. Kasi as, I, as far as I can see, this is probably uh this is the 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 most uh jump packed of all the webinar that we had in this series. So 224 or 23 yata ang pinaka max kanina. Right now we're 218. So we're expecting 218 registrants dun sa attendance natin para mabigyan natin kayo ng certificate. Okay, so take academy.ph for and um just fill up and you're good to go. So Let's answer the question. Ayan, so I, I can see Anna here. I did both of their boot camps and it was really, really good. Okay, so again, hindi ako member ng, ng Guidem, at least for now, probably. I'll enroll in the, the near future, pero I can attest. I, I meet Ian and Renzon personally. They've been uh, a speaker of my community, yung students ko sa CCNA and uh, I can personally attest that they are very sincere and they are very uh, kumbaga, uh, serious in helping aspiring and newbie 
Filipino to get their career in cybersecurity. So I, I'm betting my name in the name of Tech Academy and role in guide them if you really want to get your career in cybersecurity. Right? So, ayan. Uh, hanap tayo ng question. Uh, huh. So I can see a lot of familiar names and faces out here. So thank you so much for attending. There's a lot of questions. Um, I would try to answer Sir Billy some of it. Sure. Uh, uh, what are, so from Sir Eliseo, what are the security framework model standards for or ISO to study in the blue team? So there's actually a lot. So standards are not specifically of what skills you have, but it's more of, it's more of um, governance. It's more of uh, being compliant to this govern uh, to this kind of uh, compliance bodies like ISO 27001 is one thing. PCI DSS, if you are a company that uh, process a credit card payments, then you have to be a compliant for PCI DSS. Um, there's also a HIPAA, wherein if you are processing health records, you need to some to set some sort of standards as well of on how you safeguard or how you save or how you um, uh, how, how how you process those health records because we don't want this to be leaked, right? So I I don't malaman ko ano yung mga sakit natin, right? Personally, so that's kind of like a sensitive and personal uh, or private information from us. So there are different standards and frameworks. GDPR is all is now gaining an attraction, not just now but you know from from the past. And and dami nang na fine na company uh, who's dealing with GDPR sanctions. Even even Google and even Facebook are being sanctioned by billions of dollars just because of GDPR. So you should be aware of those frameworks. And there's also a framework called MITRE framework. So MITRE framework is, it's like a Bible for us now because of uh, this every day, I keep on referring to MITRE framework. MITRE framework is, it's an adversary. It's a knowledge, uh, it's a community-based knowledge sharing framework wherein uh, we can see ano ba yung different, it's like a cyber kill chain. It's like uh, and we know different stages ng attacker coming from like a resource or research uh, or initial access, lateral movement, how attacker move into different techniques or into a different uh, sectors. Um, we can expand a little bit about that. Like from the technical aspect, we have this so-called TTPs or tactics, techniques, and procedures. So ito yung mainly na dinidiscuss dun sa MITER framework. And how can we defend those techniques? How can we perform some prevention on those tactics? So that is what we call MITER framework, MITER attack framework. So just to answer uh, Sir Eliseo's question. Um, ano yung mga books na mara-recommend mo, sir, sa Blue Team? There's a lot, actually, if you could see on my shelves. And I actually ordered two new books yesterday. There's this new book called Ransomware Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures uh, that was just released by a Russian guy, a Russian guy that works in Group IB. So Group IB is a company that also performs or that provides cybersecurity services. So I just pre-ordered that one last night. Uh, I have also a couple of uh, incident response books. If you could see on my... Uh, on my shelf. Um, incident response, uh, uh, author niya is one of the founders of Mandian, which is Kevin Mandia, and a lot of uh, Blue Team books too, and a couple of science books. So I also have a couple of malware analysis books, um, yung mga malware analysis and detection, mga cyber breach. So I, I'm a fan of Sometimes, um, kapag nasa airport, na board mag-wait ng boarding time, right? So, uh, I normally bring one book uh, just to read something. And yeah, it's it's really good. Um, another question here. Uh, mm -hmm. hmm. Another question. Uh, so... In terms of ransomware, is there a way to get a legitimate ransomware decryptor or where to get it? A um, couple of security vendors are releasing free decryptor. So just so you know that you know you can download it for free. But again, this is being abused by the attacker. When you say decryptor, normally it's a good, it's a good application that decrypts those infected people. But these hackers are always like this. Now they take they take our assumptions against us. Like we, we assume that the decryptor is to decrypt these encrypted files, right? But sometimes this decryptor is, again, another variant of ransomware. So don't assume things, you know, just verify it first and get these things coming from legitimate vendor like Kaspersky, Cisco, 
uh, Mandiant, Microsoft, uh, Palo Alto. So we provided a couple of decryptors uh, from the past. So you could just you know download it. Uh, and yung mga antivirus solutions uh, such as Symantec, uh, Trend Micro, they also release a uh, couple of decryptors so you could just get it. But again, be careful and be vigilant on downloading that. Totoo, okay, so this is really a good question. So there's like a myth before wherein, ah, yung mga antivirus vendors, sila din naman yung nakikreate ng virus eh. Yes, sila yes, din naman yung yes. nakikreate ng malware just to keep up with the business. Um, Based on my experience dealing with them, I, I work with a couple of them um, even up until now. Sometimes may mga nakakasabay kami sa engagement. Let's say um, they hired Unit 42 as, as a consultant firm to, 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 to manage the, the incidents that's happening. And sometimes they even bring up some consultant from another uh, antivirus vendor so we can collaborate. Um, I would say that this is a false accusation, uh, accusation from, from the antivirus community. I'm not sure. Maybe it happened from the past, but right now, it's just a myth for me wherein um, they're not the one who is creating malware because it's massive. If, if you work in an antivirus solution or vendor, you know for sure that it's really a busy day almost every day, especially if you're part of a core member team. Now, oh, there's some new malware. Okay, I need to create a signature out of it. And creating a signature out of it takes time. And then, hindi ka pa tapos dun sa bagong virus na yun, meron ka na namang another signature na kailangan mo i-create. And you have to release this across their clients para kapag yung client na yun is nahit ng, ng, ng malware na yun is madedetect and prevent ng solutions nila. So that's how antivirus works mostly into uh, signature-based detections. So it's, you know, I think they're so much busy in a sense of they don't have much time creating another variant. But um, again, it's kind of like um, a myth for me, at least based from my experience dealing with them. Yeah, a lot of, uh, Anna, thank you so much. Um, okay, uh, there's a question. Sir Renz, ano mas maganda pa sukuyin sa cybersecurity, cybersecurity engineer? Or penetration tester. So cybersecurity engineer depends on how your company define engineer as a whole. Uh, sometimes cybersecurity engineer works on a platform side wherein they're doing like maintenance, administrations of, let's say, oh, may bago tayong firewall. It could be a collaboration with network engineer plus cybersecurity engineer. Cybersecurity engineer defines the use cases, the some, some of the rule sets out of that firewall and the network engineer can you know implement that and also deal with some hardware stuff and uh, you know patching the firmware. Um, cybersecurity engineer can deal with um, also again those tools that I've mentioned recently, IPS, IDS, Sim Solutions. Uh, sila yung manage nun. Penetration tester is you know the people who penetrate the system, who so penetrates the networks to find the vulnerabilities. Ano ba yung mga latest exploits? Kaya ko bang exploit tong company na to? And then you know I can create a report out of it and then put it and send it to the client like hey you know what your 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 web server is actually vulnerable and then i was able to compromise your web server in just a couple of seconds i was able to gain domain admin credentials i was able to perform credential dumping i was able to perform a lateral movement from your web server into your domain controller so i will create such report present it to the client and then present what are the prevention techniques mitigation techniques that they can apply for them not to get hacked by someone out there. So that's the job of penetration testers. So there's the, the question of ano mas maganda, it entirely depends on your preference. It depends on your, um, I would say, uh, kung ano ba talaga yung hilig mo. Um, I would say on this, uh, maybe there, you would excel on cybersecurity engineering. So you would excel on also automating stuff, which could be part of an engineering life, or it could be fun breaking things, breaking things and then apply fixes out of it. So that could be a penetration testing. So first define what you want and uh, maybe try both things and then try to compare and saan ka ba mas enjoy And that could answer your question. Um, Ito, this one, bro, is DLP endpoint a standard now for every company from Lauren? Um, yeah, that's a good one. DLP stands for data loss prevention wherein let's say merong nagli-live within our network coming from an external entity, coming from an external um, uh, external, uh, let's say IP addresses or domain and such. Let's say may nag-performance data exfiltration. Let's say, okay, I'm a customer's 
it happened in one of the BPOs in the in, in the Philippines, wherein um, he is part of the account that processes some personal information because it's like a credit card company. So let's say let's say Mastercard or Visa, but it's not it's not really the the real companies that happen here. But there's this customer service who actually uh, dump all those credit card information, uh, social security number of of his account, and then send it into his Gmail account. So it was, you know, it was investigated by also by NBI. And uh, DLP works on that level wherein if someone is sending out some couple of confidential informations, leaving the network, then it would be alerted or sometimes it also prevent happening that. I would say, um, depending on the framework that you're dealing with, let's say ISO 27001, I think there's a clause there wherein you need to have at least some sort of DLP solution wherein you would detect, you would be alerted, you can prevent uh, the things that are living within your network. So that's, yeah, that's, that's my answer to that question. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh, so Rick's... Uh, Hi, Sir Rick. So he's also an alumni of Gaidem. Um, I'd like to ask if you could suggest a good IR playbook we could pattern. So there was a talk uh, in NorthSec. So I was part of uh, a NorthSec conference yeah, in Montreal, Canada last year. And then there's this guy who published all of his playbooks for free. So playbook means that, let's say there's a phishing attack, there's a DDoS attack, there's uh, a ransomware attack. You have, to, you have to follow certain checklists and playbooks, especially if you're like a junior guy. So let's say, ano yung, pag may nahi tayo ng ransomware, sometimes it panics everyone, right? So at least we have a playbook, a sort of documents that we can follow. Check this, check that, disconnect the machine, or check this domain controller if there's an infected files. So those playbooks can be gathered with, uh, or can be found into different GitHub repos. I can share it to you uh, later on, Rix. I can just PM you, we're friends on Facebook. Uh, there's also a talk in NorthSec. Uh, try NorthSec IR playbooks, search it on YouTube. Uh, it has a plenty of uh, playbooks to begin with. Uh, also, Microsoft published a playbook related to brute forcing, DDoS, uh, and password guessing, I think, for free, especially if you're like an Azure uh, subscriber or if you have like an Azure account, then you can also use that. <laughs> Hindrance po ba ang pagiging colorblind sa cybersecurity field? It's not really, to be honest. I think it was asked uh, last time on the last webinar. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a hindrance um, because... The red team and blue team are just, you know, um, I, I would say that, that those are like a mindset. It's not really a real thing that you could see it physically that, no, I'm wearing a blue badge, I'm a blue team. No, that's not, that's not going to work. Uh, it's, it's more of like how you categorize yourself uh, on a specific field because, again, cybersecurity is such a huge, huge domain. Um, it was stressful. We don't have to help them. Ito, bro, oh, yeah, I think bro. I think we skip natin to kanina uh, from firewall route. I think they recommend automatic sandboxing solutions for malware analysis. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's yes, a good. One. Which solution would you recommend? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so um, malware sandbox really helps, uh, especially if you're, uh, if you put this, if you put it into a good network diagram that you have or in your network architecture, let's say before any email comes in into uh, your internal employees, uh, those traffics will be, will be analyzed by your malware sandbox first, and then maybe your email security gateway before it reaches out into the recipient. So you could also place that one um, in, into that uh, into that domain uh, from the, your network architecture diagram. I would say it's really a good one because you have at least the benefit of knowing what are those files being attached into your email or maybe a sandbox uh, that could analyze all potentially um, malicious files that are being downloaded from the internet ng mga employee mo because who knows, right? Who knows what are they trying to download? So if you put your malware sandbox out of it before it reaches out, to your domain or into your computer, then that's a good one. You could also use malware sandbox as part of your dynamic analysis. So dynamic analysis means that meron kang weird file and then you wanted to know what's the capability of this file. So dynamic and so what malware sandbox could do is you could just drop your that file or that binary and then it would execute it on its own. So it would execute it, it would run it, and then it would look for any type of behavior that you should be alarmed with. 
let's say, oh, kapag dinoble click mo tong binary na to, is magkikreate to ng mga subkey sa registry mo or um, it will infect maybe uh, your system32 folder or maybe it would drop another JavaScript within your temp folder that connects into a Russian IP. So, yung mga those kind of information's behavior, you would typically know that, especially if you don't have these skills yet, then you could uh, depend on malware sandbox um, just to you know, analyze dynamically some sort of malware. So that's a good one to have. Recommendations, I'm not really, even I work for a vendor, I'm not, I don't really, uh, I'm not really a vendor focused guy, but of course, just to be biased, I'm Wildfire from Palo Alto is a, is a good thing as a malware sandbox. Um, I'm not sure of in Cisco what sort of the products that they have in sandbox, but uh, Wildfire also, uh, FireEye has this AX, FireEye AX, I think. So that's also a sandbox from FireEye now, which is Trellix, which is a combined McAfee and FireEye. Um, there's also a couple of uh, web-based malware sandbox, which is any that run hybrid analysis um, and Joe sandbox. So you could search on those three things online and then you, know, you could do it more of a research thing. So that's what I recommend. Yep, so... Any other questions? Uh huh. I I think I remember there was a questions related to the cloud recently, sir Sir Billy. I'm not sure if we still have time or should I stop here now? No no. Uh, um, it's your call, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine answering questions. This, this yeah, is I I remember kanina yung sa cloud. Kung safe daw ba? I I'm paraphrasing na lang ano. Uh, kung safe yeah. daw ba yung mga files kung nasa cloud na, I think ganun yan tayong pagkakaintindi ko. Ah, yeah, um, that's actually a good question. I think that was for Sir Norbert, Norberto Nalasco. Uh, the question was, yung mga files na stored sa cloud, pwede ba yun maapekto ng ransomware? So, the thing is, that is happening since, I think, two years ago or three years ago. So, it, it doesn't mean that if you, if you subscribe into an Azure AWS and GCP cloud, and you're expecting that you're 100% secured, then that's totally wrong. So securing the cloud surface is actually a shared responsibility between the cloud platform itself or the cloud service itself and also to their users or to their clients. So we've, we've had a couple of cases wherein there's like a ransomware within the cloud because this is getting breached. Um, the, main, the main focus into the cloud right now is some sort of misconfigurations yung mga yung mga S3 bucket natin na uh, sometimes it should be private but it's can be it can be accessible publicly uh yung IAM or yung identity and access management roles and permissions within the cloud is a huge topic because this normally being abused by the different hackers so we've actually released uh, a report uh, from unit 42 side since we we are focused on a research uh, so we've released a report about cloud threat detections report i think 2022 I can share the link later on to Sir Billy and then he can just cascade it to, to the community. Uh, again, if you are a cloud user or if your company has onboarded a couple of you know, servers, domain controllers into the cloud, it doesn't mean that you are 100% safe. So you should, you should also know how to respond to a scene, an incident wherein your servers are actually on the cloud and it's not on an on-premise. So yeah, that's the answer to that. And that's really relevant um, question. So thanks for that. And um, before we continue answering questions, um, again, dun sa mga uh, nag-attend, uh, I can see we only have 163 right now who registered for attendance and certificate. Kung hindi pa kayo naka-register, go ahead to techacademy.ph forward slash renzone. Uh, I also will put it on the chat box. Para ma-register nyo yung pangalan nyo kasi uh, this kind of webinar, lalo na, lalong-lalo na kung ikaw ay nagsisimula pa lang, uh, will be, uh, for example, wala kang experience, you can showcase this kind of seminar or webinar to at least um, dun sa mga recruiter para magkaroon ka ng baseline or foundation kasi para ka na rin nag-attend sa mga senior, for example, ni si Renzon ng isang premium seminar about fundamentals ng cybersecurity. So, i-take advantage nyo na. Hey, techacademy.ph forward slash uh, Renzon. So kanina may tanong dito, I think from Kevin, ano daw yung requirement skills bago mag-aaral ng cybersecurity? So um, in my own opinion, 
it is not recommended pero it would be beneficial or helpful kagaya nung sinabi ni Sir Renzon kanina na meron ka ng understanding like the the network fundamentals like for example alam mo nang ibig sabihin ng ano yung OSI ano yung TCP IP ano yung IP addressing routing protocols and three way handshake and so on kasi those will be uh, benefit you in terms of uh, analyzing logs and so on or connections kasi sabi nga ni Sir Renzon you are uh, protecting the network or you are kumbaga finding holes kung nandun ka sa for example penetration tester sa network ng company nyo. So it would be very, very uh, good foundation kung meron ka ng understanding or fundamentals ng network. And um, as far as I can remember, si most, most, most of uh, IT professional in, in the network and cybersecurity, hindi naman lahat, ha? most started with at least CCNA or any network fundamentals training. So si Sir Ian, si Sir Renson, na share nila before dun sa, sa meetup namin dati, they started as CCNA before they go further with what they have right now. So ayun. That's, that's, that's right. Um, and also, uh, I wanted to just tell everyone that, let's say, ang dami kasing mga companies na nag, you know, they try to build up their security team, but they don't have really budget uh, to allocate some you know, expert talents and very expensive individuals. So what I recommend is to upskills your network engineers because they know how networking works and they know your network um, you know, devices, capabilities, ano may mga traffic na nag-flow uh, within your architecture. So I think number one uh, good advice if you're trying to build up some team uh, within security is to get some key people from network engineering team, network architecture. They would definitely help you to engage with a lot of network attacks and uh, also to shape up your cybersecurity. So if oh, I'm also a fan of you know recruiting people within the company if ever we are hiring. So let's say, you know, even the help desk can help, even the system admin can help and, you know, collect all these three key people from different departments all together, upskill them to be like a security mindset guy. And, you know, you don't need to spend so much money to hire just one individual and, you know, that you also help them to reach their goals too. So that's also a recommendation that we can have. There was a question with Sir Roger, I think second ko na nakita. Uh, Sir Renzen, are you familiar po with Nokoyawa ransomware? I've heard this last year. I think they are trying to attribute Nokoyawa with the Hive ransomware because there's a, there's also a ransomware called Hive. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're using some sort of different algorithms to encrypt the files. Um, I think I saw that from a Trend Micro blog uh, when I was doing some research. Um, and also, Nokoyawa, they're not doing some double extortion. So it's... So those... So just so you know that ransomware are affecting people, right? Affecting clients. They also perform double extortion, wherein let's say they're trying to reach out to your major clients. So let's say Tech Academy has a major client. Let's say a client in Sir Billy is Department of Defense of, of Philippines. So I've infected Sir Billy as Tech Academy as a ransomware, but it's not, it, it's not gonna end there. I will also tell Department of Defense that hey, I have your files because I've I've I've, I've hacked uh, Sir Billy Tech Academy. So that's what we call double extortion. So it's more of like double effect wherein you have to pay the ransom plus you are losing your uh, reputations to the industry kasi pinapaalam nila sa major client mo na nahack ka nila. So that's also a thing now uh, to these hackers. So yeah, they're doing a lot of crazy stuff. Another question from Elmer Benavista. Sir Billy and Sir Renzo, for a company, for example, with zero knowledge and got infected by ransomware, to whom we should contact? Can we hire Unit 42? Well, if you can <laughs> <Yes>. afford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, so we are not dedicated, again, we are not dedicated to just a Palo Alto client. We're actually dealing with, I think, 70 to 80% percent of our clients are not Palo Alto clients. Um, mostly, uh, you know, different organizations. If you could see on your unit 42, that Palo Alto networks.com, we actually collaborate with N uh, FBI uh, in US, NSA, uh, Interpol, or International Police Department in Europe. Um, so we, we normally collaborate uh, with this law enforcement. But to answer your question, you, yes, you could contact unit 42. Uh, if ever you want some consulting firm to investigate that you are getting hacked. And also, you could ask for uh, you know our law enforcement bodies like NBI, Cybercrime Unit, uh, DICT. I think they have also their own Cybercrime Unit out there. Uh, maybe they can help you out 
uh, there's a couple of hotlines that you can find uh, on their website, even on their social media uh, that you can contact with. Yep. And uh, I, uh, as far as I know, pagka uh, company related or legally matters, you can also uh, inquire with NBI, right? They, they uh, have a cybersecurity team that caters uh, the, those type of cases. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Okay, so it's a good question from Sir Arvin Bohol. I think we, we, I know you, but what skills do you think are the most important for a cybersecurity consultant? So most of the time, we are really focusing on our technical skills without knowing that soft skills are actually necessary in, in a consulting, but not actually just consulting, but you know, in your entire life or in, in your entire career. Um, I've met a couple of people who are really, really nerd, you know, you know, they are a terminal guy, very nerd, who knows how to code, who knows how to perform pen test, cybersecurity, almost everything. Technically, they're really good, but they have a bad reputation when it comes to writing a report or maybe presenting to the client. So what I would advise is to at least gain the fundamentals to your technical abilities. You know that already, we've mentioned that, but also try to um, try to be better on your soft skills, talking with people, talking to the client, um, how you could convert these technical um, jargons into a business perspective. Sometimes they don't really care kung ano ba yung na-detect mo, ano ba yung, um, ano ba yung, imp- ano ba yung pinaka-ransomware na nakita mo, ano ba yung malware, ano ba yung DDoS, ano ba yung tools na meron tayo. I don't really care. If I'm like a CEO or a C- CFO, like Chief Financial Officer, I only care about what's the impact of this, what we, are we doing for us to detect and respond to this kind of incident. And then, ano ba ba yung next allocation budget na kailangan ko sa fiscal year? Uh, maybe we could um, we could buy another tools that can prevent us, or maybe we could send out the whole team to the training conferences to make them better. So again, soft skills are necessary too, aside from having technical skills that we have mentioned uh, recently. So that's a good question, Sir Arvin. Um, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Do I need to have a heavy understanding skills in networking if I want to pursue DFIR? Yes, you have. Uh, you need to have at least a solid understanding with networking. So we normally ask for like a network diagram. Let's say, you know, during the scoping calls, like, you know, things happen. So inaalam namin kung ano ba nangyari sa company mo. All right, why, why are you calling us? Is there something wrong within your infrastructure? Uh, before the, the call ends, we normally ask, can, can I have your... Um, network architecture diagram so that we know what are the data ingress or maybe what are your crown jewels, where do you store your database or where can I find, you know, yung mga tiering ng Microsoft Tier 0, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. Uh, Makikita namin kung ano ba yung mga servers na kailangan namin i-focus. Because let's say we had a client worth 30,000 endpoints, including servers. So you cannot really investigate each one of that. It might take you years for you before you finish. So we need to know exactly on a high level kung ano ba yung pinaka, you know, crown jewel mo, saan ba nangyari yung pinaka infection. And then we'll kind of pick a couple of machines. Okay, I need logs for this. I need logs for this. I need logs from your firewall from January 1, 2022 up to April 18. So we need to know those kind of contexts uh, before, uh, before uh, we ask uh, things to you. So again, understanding of networking is heavily recommended um, if, if you wanted to pursue with DFIR or even within cybersecurity. All right. Um, which certification is better for starters? I guess SEC Plus by CompTIA would be a good start if you're looking for certifications. Yes, and also the, the Cisco CCNA Cyber Ops. So aside from CCNA, yeah, yeah. there's also like CCNA Cyber Ops. That's also a good good one. Um, a couple of our guidance founders also took that um, a cert. So that's uh, that could help you to build up your you know your fundamentals too. So uh, that's a good one. Uh, e learn security certs. I think it was mentioned by uh, the speaker last time. Um, he mentioned ECIR, ECTHP, ECDFP. I took all those asserts already from the past, I think three, four years ago, that really helped me because that's hands-on. Um, so before you take the ECR, ECTHP, uh, you need to re- create a report. So that's like two to three days worth of work. So you have to perform hunting, you have to perform incident response. And at the end of the day, you need to write your report. So again, that's that comes with the, the, the question of 
what are the typical skills that you need. Aside from technical, you should also need to have like soft skills. Um, so on those e-learn security courses that I've mentioned, uh, kailangan mo mag-write ng report. I, I think it took me around 30 to 40 page report before I submitted it and good thing I passed. Um, so yeah, you should know also uh, know how to write a report, not just in the blue team, but also in the red team side on the penetration testing, your end result is a pen testing report. So that's why uh, you need to know how to be more well-versed when it comes to you know, writing your findings, write, writing your uh, detections, writing your, uh, your own report. Bro, I, I have a personal question, bro. This, this comes from me. Um, for example, in your uh, experience and uh, opinion, how, how would you really distinguish if uh, the, the threat, for example, nung the bad guys are legit? Like, for example, I, I tell guy them, I have your data. You need to pay me $50 million and, uh, or else I'll spread it through the internet. So, paano malalaman, kumbaga, na, 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 na legit yung claim ko na meron akong copy nung data nyo? Like, for example... Oh, I can one. fake it, eh, di ba? I can fake it. Sabihin ko na may data, may hawa ako na data nyo, sendan nyo ako ng uh, 25 uh, or 100 Bitcoin, for example, in this address, hindi naman mahirap i-trace yun, di ba? So, paano nyo malalaman yeah. na legit na may hawak talaga ako ng kopya ng data, for example lang? Yeah, that's a good one. That's really a good question. So, first is, it's it's a work of threat intelligence wherein, again, we communicate with hackers, right? So, in dark web or what we call deep web, before you purchase something, uh, you have to register on that Onion website. Mm -hmm. You have to go to, to that online dark forums, uh, dark web forums, wherein every user has its reputation. Reputation means that kapag mataas yung reputation mo, this user is actually legit that he's actually buying a lot of dump accounts or you know leak files. Mm -hmm. So from the threat intelligence side, we've created a couple of accounts already, legitimate accounts from our end, and then we normally deal with clients. Sometimes we ask... We asked the, the, the hacker, hey, can you prove to me that it's this is really files uh, from, from this company? Sometimes they would send you around one gig of file as an example. And then we would know, we would ask the client, oh, hey, client, we got some sample files. Are these really yours? Are these really legitimate from your computer or from your, uh, from your sensitive information or sensitive data? If they say, yes, this is actually our network diagram. This is actually our financial report. Then we will get back to the hacker. Sometimes we buy it. Sometimes just you know, just to clarify things, pa. Na oh, okay, we we need some sort of, let's say, ten terabytes of data, but we don't have this money. Can we just pay some of this? So sometimes they would allow you. So they they won't entertain you if you don't have like a low reputation, uh, in dark web. So that's why uh, our threat intel teams have mul multiple accounts within dark web, dark web and deep web that has a huge reputation, meaning that we normally buy leak accounts. Okay. Now I understand. Thank you, bro. That, that's a solid uh, explanation. Because I, I remember last time, um, I'm not sure if mga taga Accenture dito, and I'm not sure then kung to oh, yeah. di ba? That happens, yeah, they, yeah. they didn't pay, and then the, the information was leaked on the internet. So, um, yun lang. Na naalala ko lang bigla. Thank you, thank you. Questions? Uh, Kevin Edward, paano po halimbawa may nabuksan kang ransomware at may nakakonect na external HDD? Uh, Maapektuhan po ba yun? Uh, I'm certain, yes. Lahat ng, yes. even uh, all connected device, even the network devices as far as the, the connection, I mean, yung, yung uh, connection mo is connected sa network, for example. Yeah. They can be infected. Yeah, it, it, it will still be encrypted if you have like those external shared drives connected on your network. And the nasty thing about ransomware is that they also delete your backup copy. If you're familiar with volume shadow copy or VSS into the Windows 10 or you know common Windows uh, operating systems, that actually being used to you know, uh, perform, uh, you know, it's like a snapshot uh, in VMware, but it's on Windows. So uh, volume shadow copy is also being deleted by most of the ransomware. Because sometimes, of course, they know that, oh, okay, this guy would just restate it into a backup or it will just reinstate into the latest uh, backup that they've got from last week, let's say. So what they tend to do is to disrupt and also just to delete those backups so that you backup copies. 
So that's how it works. Yep, and um, dun sa mga interested sa sa um, program na ino offer ng guide them, you can check their their uh, page. I guess Shiner ni Sir Renzon kanina, or you can PM Sir Renzon directly, or even us. I can um, uh, refer you to them if needed. Pero you can um, um, search their uh, page. I, I guess shinare din natin a couple of days you, or nilink din natin yung page nila dun sa page natin. You, you can see all the information there about or para makapag-inquire kayo dun sa program ni Gaiden. Right. So we, we also have like social media like uh, in, in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, we're, we're all over the place. So, um, you know, you can just follow us. You can even follow me on LinkedIn, search Renson Cruz or even Facebook. Just message me, messenger me, DM me, tweet me, DM me on Twitter. I'm also kind of active in Twitter. Uh, my, my username is Rensec, R3NZSec, so Rensec. So uh, I normally tweet things related to Blue Team uh, uh, on, also on Twitter. So uh, you, you could follow me if ever you have other questions, you know, that, that bothers you a lot, just, just reach out. Yes, yes. Kanina katulad ng sinabi ni Sir Renzon, um, there, there's this myth specifically in the IT industry na kapag, uh, for example, um, nagtatrabaho na sa Palo Alto Network, sa Google and so on, um, they are untouchable or kumbaga nandun yung fear natin na baka i-ignore tayo or nandun yung hiya natin kasi they are ahead of us. Pero um, gusto nating tanggalin yung myth na yon. You can PM any of us or any of IT experts na sa tingin mo ay makakatulong sa'yo para ma-speed up mo or ma-level up mo yung IT career mo. Kasi uh, sabi nga ni Sir Renzo, we all started from scratch. So we're, we're doing right. all of this para ma mas mabigyan kayo ng awareness and opportunity kung ano yung mga pwedeng yung gawin sa karir nyo para talagang mag-grow yung, yung terms of uh, skills, terms of uh, your career, in terms of your salary. By the way bro, kanina may nakita kong question. Hindi ko nalang makita uli kung sino nagtanong. Kung, kung uh, may, may life balance pa rin daw ba something in terms of cybersecurity? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, it's really a, you know, um, it's really a busy job uh, personally. But yes, I have, uh, yeah, we, we do have like work-life balance. It's all about your time management then. Kasi, so uh, I used to travel then uh, uh, in some other countries just to have fun, chill. Um, and yeah, watching some Netflix, uh, talking with friends, hanging out with friends, I still do that uh, on a weekly basis. So again, it's just a matter of uh, how you can manage your time. Uh, even, especially on my, on my case, we're in, I'm teaching every weekend. Right now, I, I'm, I'm about to teach two courses, Saturday and Sunday. Monday to Friday, I'm working, but I, I'm still able to catch up with friends. Um, and also talk to loved ones, parents. Since I'm working abroad, I'm just alone here. Um, so, so yeah. There's also a question, uh, what are the good companies? So, okay. Uh, what, are the, what are those companies that are really good in terms of cybersecurity? I, I think there's a lot. It could be uh, internal cybersecurity or it could be an out, it could be a consulting gig. I would say uh, go for security vendor, go for cybersecurity vendor. They can really, really pay well. The benefits are uh, very huge and uh, it's so it's also have an advantage for you uh, to have like a CV, like you work in Cisco, you work in Palo Alto, you work with these this, uh, big vendors out there. But my advice, not just work for Cisco, work for Cisco Talos Intelligence not just work for Palo Alto, work for Unit 42. So these are, again, the, the teams that you know, receive different cases on a daily basis. Uh, I think this is maybe the pros and cons of working internally uh, or versus being a consultant because being a consultant, you receive different incidents every day. Sometimes I receive four incidents in a day. It means four companies get hacked on a daily basis and it's just me and we have like hundreds of consultants within our team so imagine how many incidents we are receiving on on a daily basis or maybe on a weekly basis um so uh if you are working as a consultant you 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 will gain a lot you know mabubugbog ka talaga but at the end matututo ka talaga hands-on technical abilities and lalawak din talaga yung network mo working on internal organizations let's say uh, it's a fintech company, uh, and then you are working as an incident response there or cybersecurity. That's also a good thing. It's not really bad, uh, but you know the cases. If you want more challenging, go to consulting. If you want more of like a chill slash more of like a 
you know, you're about to handle project, mentoring people, navigating with tools, then just go for internal, um, uh, internal hiring or internal cybersecurity. I, I've been into different organizations where I was part of an internal org, which is like a global thing, man. So major exciting then. But again, consulting life, it's it's really wild. <laughs> I mean, uh, some we actually even received so, some sort of uh, you know weird incidents. Meron meron kami mga incidents where in the infected machines are actually casino. You know, in uh, casino, like from, from, from the technical standpoint, what lags do we have in casino? Or what, what, what kind of operating systems are, you know, running within this casino machine? So we, we tend to receive those, those cases and we tend to be successful on navigating uh, on that part. So may mga team ako na who's been receiving this uh, kind of rare cases. And we sometimes also be part of the expert witness into the court where in sometimes may mga litigation activities that is involved within incident and then you have to present your findings to the court so we have some expert witness that are dealing with that too All right thank you thank you sir um question guys before uh, i guess we can entertain at least two to three questions more before we uh let go sir renson kasi alam natin busy siya so ano may may, may question pa ba Mm. It's a big actually it's a big audience so thank you so much guys. Yeah um, yeah bro this is I, uh the the most uh number of attendance we had in all of the series we we uh, um have in the past uh four webinars. So uh ngayon lang namin naabot yung 200 plus. Although maraming nagre-register kaya lang kasi of course may may trabaho sila and something right. came up and so on pero we recorded everything naman. We're going to send you the, the recording link sa email as well as uh, we're going to ask a copy of slides from Sir Renzon para uh, ma-review nyo yung mga diniscuss din natin during his presentation. So again, doon sa mga hindi pa nagre-register ha, techacademy.ph forward slash Renzon with the N. Marami, marami nagkakamali kanina. So si Sir Renzon ay uh, Renzon, not Renzo. <laughs> That's right. So... Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Shout out lang kay, kay uh, Chic, Chic Boy Ben. Just wanted to share that I've been following Sir Billy throughout my networking career and become CCNP. Woohoo! After then, shifted career to cybersecurity where I met Sir Renzon. So the journey was awesome so yeah it's possible and doable congratulations bro so um not sure kung yun talaga yung pangalan mo pero probably um kilala kita <laughs> and uh, congratulations kasi um sa totoo lang talaga guys um networking will be part or uh, your networking skills will be a huge part of your cyber security role kung doon talaga yung gusto niyong puntahan kasi um yung connection at saka yung communication kasi uh, it's more of a network thing eh. like like papaano nakakarating yung yung from one node to another papaano na access yung ganito yung ganyan so yung understanding mo with the fundamentals of how network works or how a um, PC1 or PC2 connects in in a high level overview kumbaga makakatulong yun Although hindi siya required, pero it would be beneficial. Mas mabibuild nyo ng matiba yung foundation nyo kasi you have that uh, understanding. So, ayun. Yeah, I, I used to remember that uh, when, when I was starting up in my career, year 2020, 2014, 2015, um, I, you know, I'm so curious about cybersecurity. So I tend, I was like a night shift guy. I'm, a, I'm an IT doing some access administrator back then on my first job. And then I used to attend a couple of conferences. So imagine pang gabi ka and then ang, yung mga conferences, yung mga meetups is 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So, you know, straight from, straight from your shift, you're about to attend a couple of um, conference and then matatapos siya ng 5 p.m. So ang pasok mo is 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. So itutulog mo is like two to three hours na lang. Tapos travel mo pa yon, going back to your house, going back to your apartment. Um, so networking as a skill is really a good one, uh, but also networking with people can also, uh, yeah, again, a huge, um, uh, very helpful to, to your career. Uh, I've met a couple of people. Yung sa, sa, sa community namin, I actually referred two people already. Uh, normally, if I receive uh, 
uh, like job descriptions and uh, I mean, I'm not available on that. I normally refer that to the guiding alumni, which we had like 500 members already. And then as of now, we have like, you know, we have a couple of referrals within the industry, but in abroad, I've referred two people already. And now I, I used to work with them on my previous company uh, in, in UAE here. And now he, they are here. So it, it won't be possible if I don't know them. It won't be possible if we don't do some networking, right? So uh, you might achieve your best, best job in your life through networking. Maybe someone can refer you. Maybe someone can vouch for you. Or maybe someone, you know, you could work with some open source project. And then at the end of the day, they might, hey, why can't you work for us? So it's, uh, it could be very, again, helpful for you and to everyone. Right. So, uh, kailan daw mag-open yung enrollment for CCNA? Um, it's it's currently closed right now because uh, we're still um, onboarding yung mga previous na nag-enroll. Pero you can join our waiting list. Puntahan nyo na lang yung uh, website natin, techacademy.ph. You can see the details there um, for the next batch. Uh, ayun. And then, question. After po bang mabayaran ng mga, na -hack, ng mga hacker, Ano yung mga repercussions nung action nila? Di po ba sila nakukulong? <laughs> Good question, uh, bro. <laughs> Kasi yeah, yeah. So, as far as I know, um, usually nakukulong sila sa una, pero eventually, <laughs> uh, they will be hired. Most of them will be hired. Right? Tama ba? Yeah, by Putin. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> um, so there are, there are a couple of Russian hackers na normally, let's say, na-detect na, na sila uh, who they are. Uh, so, pinopost ng FBI. Alam nyo, nakikita nyo yung mga parang, alam nyo yung sa One Piece na parang wanted. This uh, is a high-profile hacker. Uh, this is now being wanted because he originated this, you know, stocks net, toila, yung mga sikat na malware out there. Um, so, sometimes they are, you know, getting on jail if ever they, they move out of their home country. Kasi may mga, like Russia, for example, US and Russia has this, you know, not really good relationship. So Russia tend to keep their people within Russia. Sometimes, minsan may mga nagiging, may mga, may mga actions then wherein law enforcement captured someone, but actually they're not being on jail. They're being recruited by, by the government to do their thing. Um, so after, after knowing who, are, who they are, uh, sometimes they're getting on jail, but sometimes they're being recruited. And sometimes they are, you know, Nag, nag move on na lang yung government okay just do whatever you want because um may mga may mga fully funded group kasi especially in Russia China North Korea that does this kind of thing uh with backed by 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 the government so that's what happened after mm -hmm. all right so i guess uh we're we're about to wrap up so again hadun sa mga hindi pa nag-fill up techacademy.ph forward slash Renzon for the attendance and uh, certificate. I guess meron pang isa, bro. Eliseo. Sure. Uh, the last one, I guess. For an accounting firm po, I'm planning to apply for cybersecurity. Ano nung skills and knowledge na pwedeng aralin regarding that company? For ano yung roadmap? I guess part na rin ng senior ni Sir Renzon kanina, yung roadmap at saka yung mga skills in terms of the position, di ba? So, ganito lang yan, guys, eh. Ang laging nakikita ng iba, di ba? Uh, sir, ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng cyber security engineer or sa, sa network engineer and so on? Uh, minsan kasi, yung title, okay, yung, 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 yung position title depends on company to company uh, basis. Di ba? Pwedeng engineer ka dito sa, sa company A, pero dun sa kabila is uh, senior something engineer or senior admin ka lang for, for example. Pero, what you have to look at is the job description itself. Kung ano yung role or responsibility na ino-offer nung position na yun, nung position na yun, regardless of the name of the position itself. Kasi doon yung talaga makikita kung ano yung mga kailangan yung aralin or kung ano yung mga gagawin nyo on the daily day to day basis. Nandun siya. Right. I'm also a fan of looking for a job descriptions kahit na hindi naman ako nag-apply. Like just to know ano ba yung marketable skills na kailangan ko. Let's say Yep, for example, yep. I wanted to apply on Google, Cisco, or any any big tech or fun companies out there. Uh, normally, I look for the job descriptions. Okay, these are the things that I don't have. These are the things that I may have right now. So I would focus more into those weaknesses that I don't have. And then, you know, eventually I, I, can, I can pass their assessment and I can be part of their team. 
So even though na hindi ako actively looking, I'm kind of curious of ano ba yung mga latest skills na dapat meron ako or I would look for someone na talagang inululook up ko and then let's say, okay, idol na idol ko si Sir Billy, ano ba yung mga skills na meron siya? I would like to know how I can gain that skills too. So yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, there are a couple of people who added me on LinkedIn. So yeah, you just, you know, keep, uh, just, just do it and uh, uh, let me know if you have other questions aside from, from the questions being asked today. Um, uh, and, dun sa mga nagtatanong uh, ng presentation, so don't worry, we're gonna ask a copy from Zerenson and ako na yung magdi-distribute sa inyo para isang uh, download na lang kasama nung certificates. Yeah, for uh, sure. Right, so we're about to hit 2 p.m. <laughs> Supposedly, nung unang plan namin talaga kay Nizer and Zone, probably 45 minutes to one hour. But as you can see, we're almost two hours now. And um, we are very honored and privileged na talagang pinagbigyan tayo ni Zer Zone sa sobrang, even sa sobrang kabisihan niya. So uh, I guess we can entertain at least last two questions before natin pakawalan si Sir Renson kasi alam natin may mga gagawin pa siya. I guess may training pa yata sila or or No, no. Um, actually some some calls with clients okay, and okay. some So, so. Uh, question guys. Meron pa ba tayong naliktawan? Possibly po bang malaman or matrace ang ISP ko na gamit if nang hack ako? Yes. Yeah, that's that's an easy question. Yes, it can be traced. If you wanted to dig dive who you are, you can collaborate with the ISP plus uh, with a law enforcement. Sometimes they, they ask for uh, a warrant uh, before they can proceed with some investigations because you cannot tell the Atelco, hey, who's this IP? Or you cannot tell Globe mm-hmm. Smart PLDT like, oh, may nangahak sa akin sino tong IP na to. So there's also like data privacy clause that would, you know, uh, that would not allow them to disclose this kind of personal information unless you have a warrant, unless you are backed by the law enforcement. So that can be trivial sometimes, but yes, it can be traceable. Uh, what else? Okay, so Sir Eliseo questions, uh, how about IoT devices? Po, ano-ano po mga security issues na pwede gawin ng hacker? And how would uh, a blue team would react? So good question, to be honest. Um, so uh, imagine you have like a smart smart home wherein, you know, turn on the lights, Alexa, turn on the lights, turn on the lights. Uh, yung, yung fridge mo is, can, can be connected. It has an IP address that can be connected um, into a, your smartphone app and then you can just turn it off via mobile app. Let's say na, nakalimutan mong i-defrost. Let's say mawawala ka for how many months. Nakalimutan mong i-off yung fridge mo. You can always, you can also do that now. So the, the thing about IoT is it's more of like how people being more convenient on dealing with their devices uh, without or most of them are not really considering the security of those devices. Um, there's a lot of research about Alexa uh, that yung mga, yung mga voices, yung mga collected voices natin are being tracked or being saved somewhere else. Let's say me and my, let's say, fiancé are talking about financial stuff. Like, oh, here's my account. Here's my pin code. Here's my passcode. If you have like an Alexa uh, listening into your home, then th- that kind of recording might be saved somewhere else. So it's not just like that. Um, marami pang mga uh, smart home devices na ginagamit right now for convenience, but again, uh, they're using sort of like, let's say may pin code nga, pero it's just a matter of one, two, three, or maybe a password which has a password of password. So it's so vulnerable. It's like a huge topic that can be discussed in a different webinars, but uh, there's a lot of security holes and gaps when it comes to IoT uh, that can be, you know, some that can be potentially uh, be part of a huge cyberspace in the market that can be exploited by, by these adversaries. So that's uh, uh, so rents any good site resource that you would recommend to further enhance a blue team skills. So I think I've mentioned that on my slides. The try hack me, hack the box, uh, range force, let's defend that IO, blue team labs online, um, and of course guide them. So those are online resources that has a hands-on exercises. 
uh, that you could use um, uh, that can help you gain more hands-on skills and even cyber defender cyberdefenders.com so that's also a free website so don't worry i'll share my slides to sir billy and then he can just cascade to everyone who registered so make sure that you registered for you to get the slide plus the certificate of attendance yep yep you're welcome guys so all right so all right. i guess we can wrap up now with um this uh, awesome webinar again we are honored um, for your time sir enzo maraming maraming salamat sa sinier mo and um i can see from the engagement and from the comment of our attendees na marami kang na-share and marami kang natulungan at na-inspire with uh, uh this webinar so again para dun sa mga interesado uh, you can contact sir enzo or check nyo lang yung uh, page ni guide them i guess it's guide them training hanapin niyo lang sa facebook and makikita yeah, niyo yung information uh, uh, Right, I'll, I'll share the link on the Zoom chat as well uh, for you to, you know, at least get an overview of what we're trying to offer. So we have like this page, very active. Uh, before, before, before you enroll, make sure that you read some reviews because you don't want to enroll uh, without, you know, doing your own research, right? So just go to uh, reviews uh, on Guidem page where you could see a couple of feedbacks from our alumni. I think it has, I think we had like 160 people who commented there. So uh feel free to feel yeah, free and to sabi ko nga sa inyo i am i i'm also a uh, uh, a living testimony that these guys are uh, very uh, serious and um good intention uh, in yeah. in helping you guys level up your cybersecurity career so um uh, ayun kung kung talagang uh, you're ready decided or you're ready to take cybersecurity to the next level uh, enroll na kayo with uh, with Zerenson and Ian and the guys Okay, so I guess that's it for today, guys. So again, maraming maraming salamat dun sa mga nag-attend and kay Zer Renzon as well as uh, sa, sa inyong lahat. Before we end, can, uh, as we always do, can we take a, a screenshot or at least a picture? Kung may webcam kayo, pakiturn on nyo na lang and let's do a groupie, ika nga, para naman souvenir natin with... Uh, the most attend uh, most attend this webinar so far from tech academy right yeah. right i so, really appreciate your time guys so th thank you so much for taking some time i know maybe some of you are working some of you are taking lunch with your family members but you're here now um having some time with us so i really appreciate your time so th thank you guys on behalf of guide them on behalf of tech academy and uh, i know for myself thank thanks again and i hope you i can see you guys uh, in a face to face also community talk with Sir Billy. So yeah, yeah. So um, kapag ka talagang okay na, kasi we usually um previous year pre pandemic, we we do meetups dun sa community ko and we invited din right. na invite natin si Sir Renson and Sir Ian. Pero we're gonna do that siguro kapag ka talagang uh, totally zero restrictions na kapag ka normal na lahat. Right. Yes. So sobrang dami natin. I guess seven page <laughs> ng Zoom. Um, uh, what yeah. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screenshot na lang uli. So, uh, smile na lang kayo sa camera nyo. Uh, I'm gonna count na lang. So, ayan. One, two, three, smile. Next page. So, sobrang dami. Okay, so, and um, dun sa mga nagtatanong, if we're gonna invite someone from the red team again, uh, probably I'll ask Sir Enzon kasi siya yung maraming network with uh, cybersecurity or even from Guidem again para magbigay yep. ng information sa atin uh, in terms of the red team naman kasi right now we're focused on the blue team and then yun nga sa future pa we're gonna invite more experts in other areas or other fat para talagang uh, mabigyan kayo ng opportunity kung saan talaga kayo nakatadhana ika nga <laughs> kasi kung tutusin nung mga una talagang walang ganito di ba sir Renzon um, yes. walang mga ganitong webinar wala pang mga groups wala pang mga page and so on wala pang masyadong mga Pinoy na nag-offer ng mga uh, latest training or latest courses or references na makakatulong dun sa mga aspiring IT so maswerte kayo dahil ngayon meron na and itong mga ganitong libre i-take advantage nyo na so ayan I guess I'm done 7 pages <laughs> alright so if uh, any last words, Renzon, for dun sa, dun sa mga aspiring cybersecurity professionals natin, uh, we know you've already shared almost anything na pwede naming malaman, pero 
if for example you're gonna sum up um from your experience on how you started from scratch up to where you are right now can you give us at least your best two tips para sa amin na gustong pumasok sa cybersecurity yeah i think the best investment that you can have right now is to invest on your skills um me and our team in Gaiden, we normally spend a couple of thousands of, of, of pesos just to allocate budget for our own investment. So I, I don't think that I might reach uh, this, this uh, kind of uh, career if ever hindi ako nag-invest sa ko. So even yung mga paid conferences, paid online trainings, Udemy, kung ano pa yan, uh, I normally pay. I'm really willing to pay. And don't, don't hesitate to pay uh, for those uh, paid kind of bootcamp kasi um, that really helps you then talaga. And it's not just about the technical courses. You could also know more and talk about more about the, the, the instructor. And you could also be part of their community too. So that really helps you aside from knowing the technical aspects of what they're trying to, to achieve there. So if I'm not the one who's spending my money, my own money into the investment of skills, I don't think that I'm, I'm here. I don't think that I'm talking in front of you. So... Again, though, sometimes hindi natin mararamdaman kaagad yung investment natin sa mga, sa mga courses, sa mga skills, but you would realize after a couple of months, oh, I was able to answer this type of questions. Oh, now I know, I remember it was discussed from this bootcamp, from this, uh, from this webinar, from this free webinar series from Tech Academy. So you would thank yourself. And sometimes nakaka-ano lang talaga, parang nakaka-intimidate na, should I really need to spend this kind of money on this bootcamp? But again, it's all worth it. At the end of the day, you are the one who will benefit for that. Um, and then second thing is, again, networking. It's a huge topic. Na, I mean, networking with people that, that really gains a lot of uh, uh, benefits, plus factors to you, not just uh, into your career, but also it's fun learning a certain topic with with other members or with other people, diba? Sometimes sa, sa, sa Gaiden, we have our own community talk. We also have our, yung mga founders sometimes, uh, oh, I, I have to demo these new tactics that are being exploited uh, from, from, from the market. Oh, ito yung bagong exploit ngayon. Ito yung bagong vulnerability. Let's have a Zoom invite. So it's more fun if you're doing it in a group, right? So have a network of people that is really into learning and uh, create your own uh, space and then don't hesitate to share your knowledge kasi kung walang mag-share, walang mag-step up, then it might be like a boring group, right? So uh, try to share kahit na yung mga small things lang, yung basic of operating system, basic of Windows operating, basic of Linux commands that might impact someone's life in the future. So that's just my two cents before we end this uh, huge and great webinar, Sir Billy. So again, thank you so much. And thanks again, everyone, uh, for showing up. Um, yeah, keep in touch. Maraming salamat, sir. Uh, hands, uh, hands off talaga sa'yo. And um, uh, we are very honored and it's our uh, pleasure na, na napagbigyan mo kami. Maraming salamat, Mr. Senior. May i-add ko lang, ano, yung sa sinabi ni Sir Renzo na the, the best investment is talagang yung investing nyo sa skills nyo or investing in yourself in general kasi um, yun talaga yung magbibigay ng, ng rewards in, in the near future, lalo na sa karyer natin, ng sobra-sobra. Ika nga nila, siksik liglig at uma, umaapaw pa. Okay, so it can be uh, a couple of years from now, yung ROI. So um, you have to shell out um, um, effort, time, and money right now. Pero yung reward is very, very worth it. Or worth right. it talaga in the end. Okay, hindi lang right. financial, and, hindi lang, um, what do you call this? Hindi lang... Uh, financial kundi sa personal level na rin kasi you know um, when you started from here and then you go up here di ba napakalaking uh, satisfaction or achievement noon para sa atin so uh, as right. much as possible invest in yourself uh, take time effort and money para mapalago nyo yung sarili nyo at saka yung skills na meron kayo yeah from 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 the IT from the IT space that's actually scalable in a sense we're in scalability is a huge topic for us too, right? Diba? Gusto natin scalable yung, yung mga ginagawa natin. Gusto natin nag, you know, nag reach up to 10, 20 years, we still have that kind of skill. So let's say may mga questions kasi na, should I invest on Bitcoin or should I invest into your bootcamp? So there are a couple of those questions Now sometimes it's funny, but it might stuck on my head. Uh, let's say, yeah, you could say that you can invest on crypto. I've been into cryptocurrency for like 
five years already, 2017 when we started. Uh, I also co have a couple of uh, crypto and tokens. But again, at least you have your own skills as to 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 back up your you know your statement. Or at least you have your own career aside from having a side gigs. It's not bad to have those side gigs, those those kind of side hustles. But at least you have your core skills that you know can be a fallback sometimes. Kapag down your market, dip your market, go back to your skills, go back to your security stuff, go back to your networking modules. Um, so again, it will, it will be all worth it at the end. All right. So I guess that's it for uh, our episode today. Again, Sir Renzo, hindi maubos yung pasasalamat ko on behalf of Tech Academy community. Salamat sa'yo as well as um, sa, sa guide them. Si Sir Ian is already na-invite na natin kaya lang uh, he's into some personal matters right now. So okay. Saka na lang siya kapag hindi na busy. So, ayun. So, again, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo rin, guys, sa mga nag-attend dito. And I, I, I remember nung nakaraang webinar, ang isa sa dun sa ito matak sa, sa isip ko na binanggit ni Engineer Richard in the terms of the, sa telecom industry is that yung, yung mga tao na, 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 na merong initiative, alam nyo yun, na, na mag-take or mag-spend ng time with this kind of things na alam nilang makakatulong sa career nila, are the ones who are making progress and moving forward with their career compared doon sa, ay ano kayang magandang aralin, ay ano kayang magandang certificate, ay ano kayang magandang bootcamp and so on, pero they didn't take action or didn't take initiative. So yung uh, just by being here right now, that means you are ahead doon sa iba na still planning, still whining, and still, alam nyo yun, na hindi gumagawa ng action. So congratulations for being here. We're gonna do more webinars of this and sabi ko nga sa inyo uh, tuloy-tuloy lang yung, yung pagtulong natin as well as yung pag uh, pag uh, pag grow natin ng community. Okay, so yun lang. Si Renzon, again, maraming salamat. Thank you so much guys and again, uh, keep in touch uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, I'll see you guys there. Thanks right, for Billy. So, Thanks for the opportunity. Lahat and uh, God bless us all. Thank you guys.